Hello. Hello, Nifest, I warm and Armac. Armac, I'm super excited that you're excited because holy crap. Like, this was like reminiscent of the West Memphis 3, where like the more I dug, the more I needed to dig because I was like, okay, there's more here that I'm just not getting to right now. And oh my goodness. Oh, thank you for the bits, Nifest, I warm. Thank you so much. Lovely to see both of you. Um, but yeah, oh my gosh. I like, I have been just like nonstop finding more stuff. And I know that like between today and Thursday, I will find a million more things. And like, and I know that I'm not even getting everything because I know that not everything has come out yet. So yeah, yeah. Like I have watched in the last couple of days, I've watched too many series. I've listened to three entire podcasts. Um, I have read a whole bunch of shit and listened and watched interviews and watched a bunch of documentaries. Like, I watch everything on double speed and I read really fast. Mark Vicente is a really, really bad actor in all of this, though. Yeah, I'm not sure how to feel about that guy. Like, I go back and forth on him. Um, but the the footage is wild. It's they were obsessed with like filming or recording every single thing that this dude said because he was like the Messiah, and so because of that, there's like all of this evidence that's just, ugh, it's wild. I'm gonna try to not say crazy and insane a lot during this. Oh my gosh, my hair. Speaking of ludicrous speed, uh, I sent you a picture a picture on Instagram before stream that I have been meaning to send you for a little back. Oh, I'm sorry I missed it. I I don't uh, tend to get Instagram notifications. I have to like manually check them, so I will definitely check later. Um, and the vow was made to try and exonerate Vicente. Yeah, they are going really hard on like how fooled he was and like how he knew but he knows better now and he didn't know anything and it's like you were like not number two dude but you were like right up there how do you not know any of this uh you probably already know vicente was behind that pseudoscience grift what the bleep so i've only heard of that i i don't know a lot about it like when they mentioned that he had done it i was like oh yeah i have heard of that thing um but uh, have not watched it and I don't really know what it's about. Um, but yeah, I've been trying to figure out Discord. What uh, is the place that we make things that we made is called Look What I Can Do. Um, he was practically in charge of DOS. Um, no, he was in charge of the, Oh my gosh, there's so many. The one for the dudes. He was in charge of the dude one, not the one for the women. That was all um, Keith was in charge of the one with the women. Uh, Mark like says that he didn't know anything about that one. And that is entirely possible because it was like Keith's little pet project. Like that was like a secret and everything. So it's possible he didn't know anything about that. Um, but yeah, was he the one that married that one actress who got charged? Um, there's a lot of actresses involved, uh, like a lot of actresses, like lots of people I've seen at comic conventions because like they hang out the like, you can get my autograph for this many dollars. Uh, like there's like rows of those tables. Um, and yeah, so lots of actresses from like Battlestar Galactica, Smallville. Um, there was another one. I can't remember, but, uh, you weren't even close, aw. <laughs> uh, yeah, lots of Battlestar Galactica people. Um, but yeah, just, oh my gosh, just this is, this whole thing is so wild. Like, and um, one thing, like whenever I'm doing a topic like this, I'd like to try and like put myself in the shoes of, you know, the victims. Like, could I have, be could I have, you know, fallen for this as well. Um, can you pass me the um, pox epoxy, please? Um, like, and so I'm like, could I have fallen for this? Like, would this have worked on me? Could they have lured me in with this? You know, like, uh, like I, I wondered the same thing with Scientology. Like, and I'm, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that we did Scientology before this because they stole so much straight from Scientology. Uh, hey, Axie Mom. 
I refreshed Twitch at 603 and it did not show you us live. Oh, didn't we start it like right on time? Yeah. Um, please. That's weird. Maybe your clock is a little fast. I don't know. Or maybe ours is slow. We are we are living in the future. It's a nine. It's nine oh seven here, so. I know, I'm joking, but we are three hours ahead. Um. But yeah. Uh. So yeah. So like, I was like trying to be like, could this have worked on me? Like, would I have fallen for it? You know. Um, because they targeted basically me, uh, or at least who I was before medical leave. Um, just like really ambitious, like, like, okay. One of my closest friends. I just, uh, I, real quick. I just want to say, um, that a, uh, a lizard is not late, nor is she early. She arrives exactly when she means to, thank you. which is nine o'clock. Thank you. I, I don't know why Twitch does that. It's an, well, actually I do know exactly why it does that. And it's actually not easy to fix. It's an eventual consistency problem. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, it's like you're gonna like miss information sometimes because the server you're connecting to hasn't received the information from the server we're streaming to about the information that the stream has started. Twitch glitch. Twitch yeah. glitch says Twitch it a glitch. lot faster. Yeah. Less words. Less words. And just as good for anyone who isn't actually working on this kind of problem. Yes. Um. Okay, so, hold on, what was I saying? I was saying, oh, that's not that one, that's that one. Um, Hi, Alien Sock Puppy. Hey, Alien Sock Puppy. Very punny. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so like I try and kind of like think like, would this have worked on me? And try and like put myself in the shoes of the people um, who who did fall for it, or you know, who are the victims um and like like i was like like they were basically targeting exactly who i was several years ago um like one of my closest friends uh the day that we met uh it was like a group hangout thing and he asked my then he was hanging out he was like with my then roommate and asked her like who is that and she's like what oh that's danny she's tenacious as fuck that was like my descriptor like and and the people that they recruited for this cult were tenacious as fuck like that's who you were if you were recruited um and it was not like like when you all say this you were so tenacious like you could even get the d like a tenacious d? i am the tenacious d okay um, it was Danny. the Smallville yeah. one, and the only one I've watched she said at first she didn't suspect anything, but when it came to the branding is when she started to question everything, not sure if everything she said was 100% true. So the girl from Smallville is, like, the most complicit of everyone, besides, like, the main guy. Like, she was his, like, she's definitely a victim as well, um, but she is a victim, like... She's a victim like, in the way that, um, I'm trying to think of an ex equivalent from Scientology. I'm trying to, like, I'm thinking kind of like, um... John Travolta? No. Because he's, like, uh, kind complicit, of, I guess. In, but doesn't really... No, she's like more Tom Cruise than John Travolta. Okay. Yeah, she's, like, Tom Cruise-level complicit. But, like, she's a victim in the way of, like, um, if a concentration camp prisoner was forced to become a guard and they were then cruel to the uh, uh, other prisoners and, you know, were committing all of these acts of horror on the other prisoners. And it's like, well, they, you know, they, this was part of their own victimization that they did this. That doesn't erase the fact that they still victimized lots and lots of people, you know? Um, she's the victim like the Manson family, but not as bloody. Yeah. Um, I honestly think that this could have gotten there. Uh, if he hadn't gotten so distracted by all the sex stuff, like this would have been the next Scientology um, or next Manson family. Um, like I have little to no doubt of that. Like this guy was, and it's so weird. Cause like, okay, hold on. Okay. Sorry. I'm like, I'm like jumping right into the middle and I'm like, I am not giving any sort of foundation whatsoever for all the things that I'm saying. Uh. But yeah, um, 
Hey, Buttspot. Buttspot was MIA last stream. And we realized it after the stream. But Buttspot was actually there for the Star Trek stream, so. Oh, weird. Uh, yes, he was arrested in Mexico. And that was something that, like, uh, opened some eyes was when he fled to Mexico. And people are like, wait, why are you fleeing if you're, you know, like, this doesn't make any sense. And, like, that started waking some people up. Um, but, like, the thing is, like, this started out, it wasn't, like, it didn't start out as a cult. It started out as, like, a self-help, empowering, like, become your best self, uh, like, go get it um like that type of thing um and like his first thing that he did was very much just like flat out a multi-level mid multi-level marketing oh my gosh wow my brain just did a fart mlm yeah it was an mlm thank you multi-level marketing you, you actually said it i said it right okay i was yeah. thinking like there's another word after that isn't there no no nope. multi-level marketing that was another Plan? what are you talking about plot Ploy? Scam? Scam. There we go. That's the word I was trying to think of. Scam. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, we got Grift. There. Grift like is good. Grift. Grift is better than scam. Like, it's more Yeah, yeah it, was, it was definitely a grift. I would actually say it was a grift more than a scam. Uh, remind me the name of the cult, oh, please. Title till set. Oh. oh. Firing my producer. Hold on. Uh, it's the Nixium cult, so it's spelled N-X-I-V-M in caps, caps lock. Uh, like it's Roman numerals. Um, but that's just because he's pretentious and really thinks he's smart. Uh, well, he is smart, but he's like... Okay. Imagine... Like, Donald Trump's criminal smarts. But, like, someone with, like... The sex appeal of, like evil Rick Moranis and yeah like he's really hard to describe but he you look at him and you're like that's not a cult leader there's no way that that guy leads a sex cult like I am shocked that that man is not a virgin when you look at him um I mean I have met people like that where it's just like you look at him and you're like there's the, like this guy is just the most boring melt toast person imaginable and then like they have like 30 people fawning over them. You're like, yeah. How? Yeah. That's this guy. That is very much this guy. Um, so, so that's the, uh, that's the branding, which comes later. But yeah, the brand is a mix of his initials and another person, the Smallville actress's initials, uh, which is why I'm saying she's like the most complicit. Like her initials are literally branded onto people. Um, but yeah, okay. Let's see, the foundation. Okay, so I started saying like, I try to like empathize with the victims and see like, would I have fallen for this? Like, would this have worked on me? Um, and with this one at first, I wasn't really sure uh, just cause like, it really is like aimed right at who I used to be. Um, and it's like, okay, so like if a friend that I trusted came up to me and was like, I found this group that is like all about um, you know, empowerment and, uh, and I'm talking Nixium, not DOS. We'll get to DOS later. DOS is the sex cult. Nixium is the self-help group. Um, but God, so <laughs> oh, okay. I forgot that that existed. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, like it was basically like you would have a friend come up to you and be like, I found this group that is really good at like motivating me and like has helped me really like break through everything holding me back. And like, as a result, like I am doing really well in business now. Like they gave me really good strategies. Like that's basically how it was marketed because that's what it, you know, like ostensibly was. Um, and it wasn't until later that things got weird. It's kind of like, Scientology or Mormonism or like any of the groups that have like really, really, really weird beliefs. Like when you get up to the very top, like you, you don't get all those weird beliefs right away. Like they don't, you don't walk into Scientology and they're like, let me tell you about the volcanoes. 
Like that's not how it works. They walk, you walk into Scientology and they're like, you seem stressed. Let me do a stress test and see like what we can do. And then like after you do the stress test, then they're like, okay, like we're gonna sit and we're gonna have a session. And what we're gonna do is we're call, we call it auditing. And I'm gonna help you like through all your issues. And then when that works, then you then go to a meeting or whatever, like it, it like it's a step at a time. Um, the whole thing that isn't actually true about the like frog sitting in boiling water, like uh, it's like that um, analogy. Uh, for anyone who's curious why, why that's not true, uh, they, there was actually an experiment where they had removed the majority of the frog's brain and found that if you remove the majority of its brain before putting it in normal water and letting it boil, it won't jump out. But even with most of its brain removed, if you put it in boiling water, it will immediately jump out. So there we go. Um, but yeah, like that's we like the victims here are the allegorical frog sitting in water that's slowly boiling. Um, and so like and they use like the most, you know what I call that therapy. Um, I mean like that's the thing they use a lot of aspects from genuine like psychology and psychiatry like uh mixed in with absolute bullshit and like basically this whole thing is like a frankenstein's monster of parts of different groups so there's a whole lot of scientology um like they full-on just took auditing from scientology and just called it um The initials are EM. They always call them EMs, and I'm trying to remember what that stands for. Electro monitoring, something like that. I, it doesn't. That. Uh, hey, Mary Duff. Welcome to the uh, sex cult talk. We're we're having a good time. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you didn't get that weird stuff until later. Um, and so yeah, so I was really trying to think like, would this have worked on me? And like sometimes I was thinking like that might have worked on me I don't know and like the main thing here is that there are two founders there is Keith uh, and Nancy and um, exploration of meaning thank you Armac but <laughs> thank you but spot uh, and yeah like they just call them EMs and like they call stuff like that like they call it the technology just or the tech just like Scientology uh like it's just it's so interesting like really breaking down the different aspects of it and where he got each thing from a different uh like which source he got each thing from um i should really start a sex cult i'm hoping to pick up some tricks here perfect you came to the right place yeah i'm gonna really break it down for you thing is if you start um, a sex cult and you don't turn it into something that like ruins people's lives somehow no one's gonna complain yeah well i'm pretty sure that's just an orgy this isn't like because oh we should probably put content warning before i really uh, get into it yeah, but, like above the chat just put content warning for uh sexual and psychological abuse um just i don't want anyone to be tricked. i'm gonna be trying to like go at this like as sensitively as i normally try and do um but yeah it gets pretty brutal at some points um so if anyone hasn't seen the finished jank, there he is. I'm just fixing up the bottoms of his shoes. And here's the finished Anna. She has a salt dragon that she's riding. And here's the finished Brooke with her face ready to be put on. And the finished Brett doing the uh, dab of doom. Uh, uh, sexual and psychological abuse. Okay. Um, all right, let's see. A consensual sex cult? Um, that's not what this was. This was not a se consensual sex cult. No, Starting I was a consensual sex cult is a whole other thing. I was talking about like, with, I think they're responding to my idea, which is like, hey, just like, it's a sex cult where everyone gets laid and you don't take anyone's money. 
Yeah. Like, that's not a cult. That's just an orgy that doesn't end. But Armac nailed it. That is the thing that I've been, like, working my way up to. Nancy Salzman um, is, yeah, she is, like, a doctor in, um, like, psychological linguistics or something like that. Like, how to use words to effectively, like manipulate people's brains neuro-linguistic programming it's a it's not it like it's a pseudoscience like there yeah. are certain attributes of it that like do work because no, like the other thing that she's a doctor in is hypnosis right so when you put those two things together and you're wanting to start a cult yeah and like that's one of the big things that had me kind of pausing like with this work on me is like i genuinely believe that these people are fully hypnotized i don't think that it's just like persuasive i think that they are hypnotizing them somehow like some of the people who were victims even said like that they were sitting in a seminar and all of a sudden there was just like a shift and all everything made sense and like uh one of the big things for like the intro week is like you'll be really um uh skeptic until the third day and then the third day it really all clicks um, and oh yeah. Um, hey, Drew and Georgia. Yeah. Lovely to see you. Oh, four months. Thank you so much. Let me oh, why the sound didn't go. Um, she's a psychiatric nurse, but she's an NLP expert. And yes, it's a pseudoscience, but mentalism is very much a thing. And her NLP training does feed into that. Yeah. And you can see it. Like when she's talking, she talks weird. And, you, and once you find out her background, you're like, oh, that's like you are the way that you talk is a form of hypnotism. Like that's scary like that's mm, that's too many oh okay I, I heard a joke we're gonna we're gonna tell a joke before we get into like the dark stuff are you ready okay here's the joke you may have seen it in chat yesterday when I tried to give it a jank but it didn't work uh why is spider-man so good at witty comebacks ready? because with great power comes great response ability touch yeah do you see the shit i have to put up with oh yeah it's one-sided it's absolutely one-sided it's all me i'm the one yeah you definitely i mean you, you definitely you definitely say a lot of what those lies science. not coming out fr yeah. fluidly i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> um a consensual sex cult is called the swingers club yes um let me see, just making sure. Can we just have a cuddling cult? I like that. Um, yeah. So so that's that's my theory, is that she has figured out how to use hypnosis for this. And like, so one of the things that was kind of freaking me out while doing all this research was that like the um, like uh, surface group so nexium itself like without the sex cult without the dos without the um what is it j j dog j dos whatever um without like the sub cult um there's one it's really weird janess janess that's what it is janess um like so there's all these like sub groups and then that like is basically steps down into the sex cult so just Nexium itself seems to actually be like, I mean, it's an MLM, absolutely. And they're charging like between $2,000 and $10,000 per session. So like that right there would have taken me out of the running. I would have been like, no, I'm not going to pay $2,000 for this course, right? You know, uh, also like you just be like, sorry, I can't. Yeah, it, well, that's the thing. Like there was one woman who was talking about how she said like I can't afford like there's no way I'm gonna do this right and so um, Alice and Mac from the actress from Smallville told her like this is an investment and you are gonna be making it back so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna lend you the money and what you can you can just like work for me and until like you know you've worked two thousand dollars or whatever like that's yeah um. So yeah, that's how they got around it if you couldn't afford it. They just made you go into debt, like either literally or to them. Um, and there was something else I needed this epoxy for, and I'm trying to remember what before it dries out. 
was it the um, the new headset thing? Okay, I already did that one. I mean, fair. It was like a decent chance that's what it was. That's true. Okay. That's fine. If I remember, I'll just get more. Um. But yeah, so like the surface group, like really reminded me of a group that like I grew up in, um, like a Christian, like or interreligious international group um predominantly containing christians predominantly christian yes uh and like yeah so that was kind of freaking me out i'm like oh that's reminding me of you know what i grew up in like i don't like that uh but then i remembered how at like there would be like an annual retreat that we would go on and one year i think i was like 14 or 15 um they like I was just at the age where like I was allowed to go into like the adult um like talks right and seminars and stuff and so I went I went into one that I was all excited about and it was like uh finding meaning in media or something it was something about like finding the like uh like the hidden Christianity behind all of the popular movies stuff like that right um like like the Matrix, where the one is actually Jesus. Yeah, that's definitely what that movie was about. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there was definitely a fuck ton of Jesus imagery, <laughs> but that does not make it about Jesus any more than that piece of art where they had a crucifix and a jar of piss was about Jesus. Yes, that was a Christian thing. Yeah. Um... And I just remember, I don't remember exactly what he was saying, but he started like talking about how like everyone my age is basically like doing, like my first time encountering boomers bashing millennials. That's what this was, right? And just talking about how like all we care about is movies. So like, this is the only way to get to them. And like all, you know, all this stuff. And I've like full on like raised my hand and was like, excuse me, like, what are you talking about? And like, full on just like at 13 14 like lectured this man about why he should not be denigrating my generation and how we are actually really smart and really caring and all this stuff and like just like went at him and like shut him up like and i didn't know it i found out later my mom was in the room she was like behind me a couple rows and like all of her friends were like is that is that your daughter like and then they're like oh my gosh you must be so proud right now. Like they were all like amazed that like I could do that, right? And then I remembered like, yeah, I've always been like outspoken and will not hesitate to call out bullshit. So I would not have done well in Nexium is what I'm getting at. I, I would not have made it because um, even if they had gotten me to go to the Nexium things and everything, once they tried to get me to join Jeunesse, which they probably would have because what they would do is they would go to like, the ambitious, like outgoing, um, like women who seemed like they might be a little bit vulnerable, um, you know, like if they'd just gone through a divorce or like one of them had just moved to America or whatever, um, they'd be like, okay, there's this secret thing and I can't like no what was yeah there's like this group that we're doing and it's just for women and uh it's for women run by women uh and like i think that you would do really well right and so that's like basically like a sub seminar that you go to and which that sales sales pitch doesn't sound awful no it doesn't see that's the thing like they it doesn't sound awful they they will get they get you because they they figure out like keep is like like i said he has like trump's criminal ability like he is very good at say like figuring out what you need to hear and how he can say it to really get you um and the, hey welcome, taylor latte taylor. boy welcome um what the matrix is <laughs> jesus i know shock yeah um and yeah, so you go to these seminars, and what it is, is Keith sitting up on in front of everyone, talking about how misogynistic he is. Like, 
like does he use the term misogynistic does he talk about this like as it's a problem or here's like how he starts women do you want to know why we men hate you so much Oh, it's boy. because you're doing this and you're doing this and you don't shut up and you think that you're t standing up to us and we think it's so adorable and like literally literally he literally says do you want to know why we hate you so much and then explains the what's wrong with women what's wrong with women sorry what begging the question why men hate women so much like as though that is a conclusion that has already been proven and that's the thing the thing about this man is that like, so one of my former roommates, the same one who described me as tenacious as fuck, by the way, uh, was, I, I am not a doctor, but I read things and I know things. She was a textbook narcissistic sociopath, right? Um, and as such, she was very good at speaking very confidently about absolutely nothing. Um, and like, but she spoke so quickly, so confident, like Ben Shapiro, where he's talking very confidently, like he knows things and he's very smart and he's so good at doing that, that you don't realize until you actually sit and think, or you look at the words on paper that he just said nothing like, like Trump. Um, you know, it's interesting. Like Ben, like no one like that has ever had such like that effect on me. And I think it's because, like, I have to translate all of, like, English into, like, um, basically a programming language in mm -hmm. order to understand implications. Yeah. So, like, when that happens, like, it all just, like, they're compiler errors. And it's just, like, everything's red. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with me, with her, it would be, like, she would say things and I'd kind of be sitting there and, like, you know, nodding and, you know, having conversation. And then like, as soon as she'd leave, I'd be like, wait, what the fuck did she just say? And, but it would never be when she was actually saying it. It was always, as soon as she left, I would be like, that didn't make any sense. But by then, like, I couldn't bring it up. I couldn't like, it, yeah. It's a very clever ploy. You have elevator responses. Yeah, yeah. I know, I, I'm sorry to break it to you, alien sock puppy. Um, okay, I have to translate English to a programming language. <laughs> hey, Raffle. Um, I mean, like, normal conversational stuff. Like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, someone says, I'm sick. Okay, yeah, I can, I can process that. But if someone says, you know, it's like, the reason that my brain switches into programming mode and then I have to, like, translate what they're saying into a symbolic language in order to understand what, they're, what they mean nerd yes no, nerds look at me are like jesus fucking christ dude go outside <laughs> yes. thank you drew and georgia oh thank you drew you're wonderful um i fixed the audio so we'll hear things again now hooray sounds um but yeah so oof, it's oh, it's so scary like this dude um, the way that he's able, dude is an incel attempting to mansplain to women as to why as women that's the opposite to. of what happens, Just hello but that is the opposite of what this is like literally he's having sex with all of the women I mean there's like some people have that je ne sais quoi that like can just like have that effect on people. I don't know why that is. Yeah. And like, and the thing it's is, not like, the women that are the problem, like, he has some property that allows him to do that to humans. And it's only in person. Like, if you see him in a video, whatever, um, you're like, that guy? Really? Um, and even like his followers will be like, I know, I know, but like, it's different when it's in person. And he has this way, like I'm, I've watched a lot of videos of him interacting with people one-on-one -on -one, and he's very good at, uh, making each person feel like they're the only person. Like he doesn't care about who else is in that room. He is paying attention to you. Like he will full on like, and he gets like very close to you and will like link his fingers in yours. And like, you'll have this like animate conversation. Oh and my God, it, touching you. Another thing. Oh, oh, you're going to love this part. Another oh no. thing. 
everyone, I mean everyone, to greet Kiss on the Mouth. That is... Um, herpes! Herpes City. Everyone there has herpes is what I'm saying. Yes. I mean, most people have herpes. Yeah, like but... 80% of the population by the age of 45 have herpes. It's like, it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's just, almost I all of my you have people. herpes and just don't realize it. Yeah. Um, And up until like the early 20th century, it was extremely normal. Just everyone had it. That was just, just like body odor. Or body hair on women like that was just a thing that existed until advertising campaigns happened and shamed you um yeah the single biggest um, <laughs> page you're funny um, the uh, single biggest symptom of uh, herpes is other people treating you poorly because you have herpes mm, yeah um they are all in Nexium anyway. Mary Yeah. Uh, asked if they are all in love. All of these women genuinely believe that they are in love with this man. Like, they all really truly believe it. Um, some of them, like, the control that he has over them is that um, he promises that he's going to have a baby with them and that's all they want. And so, like, he will just, like, keep them lead, led on and on and be like, no, like, we're going to have that baby soon you know uh, uh, oh, the other thing is that he's sleeping with everyone and also refuses to wear guess what a hat yeah a hat. Uh, he doesn't wear a hat his, even though he's bald it's kind of weird his like his hair his, his hair is receding very badly and that's and, weird and he should like really like you know like just shave off shave everything off or just wear a hat or like a, a bandana or something alien sock puppy i know at least at one point there was at least 20 women um and it probably got more than that like but that's the one confirmed one is is that 20 women at a time yes. or 20 women and total individually but he was like right before he got arrested he had started uh like uh building up to group sex like that was going to be the next thing on the docket was that they were going to be doing group sex instead of like one-on-one -on -one time with him. Why? Because he's a sociopath who craves control. Uh, one of the interesting things about him, uh, when he was an adolescent, um, as far as this dude goes with the women, sounds like David Koresh. Yeah, he's really like a mix of a bunch of different people. Uh, and like watching interviews with like cult experts um, or like cult deprogrammers or whatever, like they're all just like, uh, oh, I, I almost want to say in awe, but that's wrong. Like they're all just like, like the things that he managed to do with his cult. They're like we've never seen stuff like this before, um, and they're like we've seen horrible stuff and we've never seen this, uh, and yeah, <laughs> but yeah, uh, go to school. Good thing they were broken up before COVID. Yeah, for real, Paige. Um, and uh, actually, his sentencing was delayed because of COVID. Uh, like, he was convicted, but they hadn't sentenced him yet, and it wound up being delayed. But let me tell you, just to, like, reassure you in advance, uh, he has been sentenced to 120 years in prison. Uh, in prison? Right over there. Right? Yeah. Yep. He is, like two miles that way i was driving past that prison and courthouse all the time when this was happening and had no idea because i have to pass it to on if i'm in a car on my way to manhattan um but yeah so okay uh Oh, I thought, okay, there's actually like in the legal things, like they have Jane Doe one and two and everything. And so for a second, I'm like, what about her? <laughs> like, uh, you should have visited him in preparation for this topic. Oh yeah, that would be great. Um, yeah, he. I mean, can you actually just straight up like visit him? Um, I don't like, know. Is that an option? Like I know Probably. you can visit like 
most people in jail. I think what in prison has well, I don't know if he's in solitary or not. Um, mm-hmm. I've been I like okay, I was looking into um like the court proceedings and everything uh right before we started streaming uh and i didn't quite get to the details so i will have those for thursday for sure um but i felt like what actually happened was more important and i wanted to have a full grasp on that before going into um like you know what happens later Roth iron chef is being gross again what that's out of character completely um in new york yeah we're in brooklyn mary duff uh i live so close and have family in the supreme court in new york and didn't know that oh that's rad uh yeah we're we're over in brooklyn and uh the brooklyn is where all of the legal stuff happened um after everything like this all happened in albany uh or a lot of it happened in albany uh which by the way albany is so pretty oh my god like that was another thing that was really weird for me like talking about uh like the group that i grew up in which is not a cult although my sister and i have debated that multiple times i do not think it's actually a cult but um like some of the parallels were truly alarming and part of the parallels were that they also have like a retreat center in uh not in albany but in almost upstate new york and like it looks the same <laughs> like all of the green and everything armac you live in a pretty area of the country like holy crap i know you're not by albany or at least i don't think you're by albany but you are in upstate new york and my god i was just teasing you off iron jeff i wasn't sure if that was intentional or not if it was like an intentional play on words or not like no one has a problem with your with it uh either as a joke or as a literal statement uh, to establish a relationship with a narcissistic sociopath, you have to play into their delusions in a way that Danny would not. It would be a big challenge. I, I might. I like, could easily. Oh yeah, you could. I'm terrible at lying though. Like I'd have to, like, manage to do it in a way where like I could convince myself that I'm telling the truth. You know, like that's the only way that I can like real like believably lie. Uh. But yeah that's odd it's like, very pretty is... here especially in the fall the hills turn fire orange it's so pretty i've i still need to like go to upstate new york and see the nature more uh other roommate goes and hikes sometimes well in the before times she would go and hike uh and like has this one photo that i'm like obsessed with where she took she went and she hiked up on top of like i don't think it's a mountain but it's a very tall hill and uh it was a couple hours north of the city and so she takes this picture of like all the trees and you can just see like in the background just like almost like a ghost skyline of manhattan and like pull the uh, thing closer again the... yeah um here like, i'm gonna oh adjust it keep going i'm so obsessed with it it's like you can see like the ghost of what's to come over you know the na- nature i don't know i have a weird brain yeah i know um okay you were talking about the keith guy who was in prison right looks like he got transferred to arizona last year oh i didn't get that far damn mary duff you're always in brooklyn oh we will have to uh meet up sometime if you feel like it we are in crown heights um that's where we live so 21 victims was the number of that keith had to pay 3.4 million yeah so that's like the why we have like the confirmed number of at least 20 people at once um but it was probably more than that that's just like we know for sure this and it's been proven in a court of law uh but yeah i worry about being too horny for public i worry about that with you too ruffle iron um i don't want you to get in trouble well i didn't spray your bubble that tells you uh i can lie if i plan ahead i'm terrible on the spot uh oh yeah on the spot don't even try um, I used to go to Troy, New York all the time. I don't like Albany, but Troy is nice. I've ne- The farthest north I've ever been in New York is Hyde Park. It's not north. Um, but, like, compared to the city, it's north. It's a couple hours north of the city. Uh, Brian yeah, Butt on cam. Ooh. Yeah. In terms of uh, lying on the spot, I am actually, like, 
regularly televised like multiple times per day but it's always something that is incredibly minor and not relevant in any way like if i'm outside and like a car like swerved a little bit and i had to move out of the way i'll lie about the color of the car uh, like to danny if i'm telling the story i'm always telling pointlessly little tiny lies. i believe that's called being a compulsive liar and yes, it's bad but i refuse to lie about anything that isn't bad so it's just one of those like okay maybe i have to lie all the time but i can choose to always make it something that is completely harmless gotcha well thank you aka ethical storytelling <laughs> Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to preempt you. Oh, no, no, no. Like, thank you. Like, like I said, like, I was just looking into, like, the trial stuff and everything. I started looking into it a couple hours before the stream because, like, up until then, like, there's been so much that I've been reading and listening and so much. <laughs> uh, but thank you for letting me know because now, like, I don't have to have that dilemma in my brain of how much do I want to. I don't think I could visit, but, like, right? I could probably do that. But I don't know. I don't think I want to. Not with this guy. He's creep. He's gross. Um, maybe with some of the victims that uh, have not been sentenced. Some of the victim, uh, complicit victims who have, make it sound like they're complicit in their victimhood. They're victims who were then also perpetrators. Uh, so they are still waiting for sentencing. Uh, they're all under house arrest, like individually, not together. Uh, but he has been sentenced to 120 years. Um, not too far from where I go. Oh, Mary Duff, we will have to hang out sometime. Um, we are a fun group of people, I think. Raffle Iron, please confirm or deny. Are we fun? Uh, just for funsies? I mean, like, that's the thing. Like, I've always kind of debated, like, how interested am I in, like, writing to people in prison? Like, psychologically, that would be very insightful. Uh, like, I always kind of had the vague temptation with Charles Manson just because I heard that he always writes back and that they are always just a clusterfuck of nonsense. And I just really wanted to, you know, have one of my own. Uh, but that temptation has been removed. So, um, wait, which one was this? Going and visiting in prison or writing. To know who were you talking about? The well, last we're person? talking about Keith. The last person you said the temptation was Charles Manson. Gotcha. He died. So he's no longer yes, a temptation. Yes, I, I just didn't hear the name of who it was. Uh, there's a lot of material on Nixium because there's a lot of footage. Oh my god. Like, I, I mentioned, like, they... They think he's Jesus. And he thinks he's Jesus. Like, as the, as the group grew, so did his hair. So did his beard. Like, so did the way that he presented himself as, like, a... He likes to call himself, like, poor as a church mouse. Like, he doesn't have any belongings. He doesn't even own a bed. Like, he doesn't even have a TV. Like, all this. And it's like, no, he doesn't own a bed. He has a mansion that is in someone else's name, but is 100% his. Like, yeah, it's all just in other people's names. Like, he was being really careful about trying to cover his ass legally. Fortunately, it did not work. But it could have... I, yeah, no, I would not actually visit. I'm not, not someone like this, even though it would be interesting. I just, yeah. Like I said, like, I'm interested in the psychology and stuff. That's why, like, Criminal Minds is the only procedural that I have any interest in at all. Because it's, it approaches it from a different angle, I guess. Um, oh, thank you for thinking we are fun, Ruffle. Uh, Charles Manson is dead, so that helps. Yeah, the temptation is gone. Exactly. Uh see jesus mom said i could see jesus this week uh just did some reading on crown heights i love crown heights it's wonderful so i've moved twice since i moved here and we literally stayed in a three block radius like the last move we stayed on the same street like when i had to like change my addresses and like the doctor's office and stuff i like i just told them like just change the number and the zip code everything else is the same uh but yeah it's great good food good people uh, if you've watched Luke Cage, the Netflix series, the second season, he journeys from Harlem to Crown Heights and like literally paces in front of my old apartment building and then goes into the restaurant right across the street from my old apartment building. Um, it was this really cool little Caribbean place that uh, was unfortunately one of the very early COVID victims that 
uh, closed. But yeah, just total trip when I watched that. Uh, you don't really need your own bed when you're sleeping with 20 different women. Yeah. I don't have a bed of my own, so scoot over. Yeah, basically. He's just like, he really wants to come across as Jesus. Like, that is his main thing. So, in, um, I meant to watch. So, Drew, I would recommend if you want to watch documentaries on Nixium, uh, there are the two series that are fairly popular, and I watched both of them. And if you care about narrative, uh, I really recommend watching The Vow and then seduced um, because the vow happens earlier chronologically and so seduced is kind of like answering some of the cliffhangers of the vow but if you don't care about that you can watch them in whatever order you want uh but like be aware that like especially the vow the vow is a long one it's like eight or nine episodes uh which is long for a docuseries and um but the thing is, like, it builds. Like, it does not start out with, like, let me tell you all of these horrible things he did. It's, like, building, like, here's what it comes... Like, by the last episode, your mind is fucking blown. By the first episode, you're like, oh, this is weird and disturbing. But by the last episode, you are just like, what did I just watch? Oh, my God. Um, but, yeah. He was moved just at the beginning of last year in January. Ah, no. Making note. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're really, really good docu-series. Like, I really recommend them. Uh, but that's the order I recommend if you are going to watch them. Uh, so the seduced you... The first episode is readily available for free, but you have to, like, pay for a subscription or something to get the rest of them, which sucks. Or sail the seven seas. You know. So... Making mo note, buttony. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, let me also, so the um, seminar that I was talking about that like opened with like women, do you want to know why we hate you so much? Um, so the equivalent seminar for the men, like he has this way, like I mentioned, like, are we going to help? Oh, 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 <laughs> good girl. <laughs> You're so good. You're such a good helper. When we first moved here, she was freaked out by all the sirens, so I started having her help, and now she's not afraid of them anymore. So, Oh, I'm also supposed to stretch. What? I already hydrated. Oh, Smingle Snack. Um, yeah. You're such a cutie. Oh, okay. Hold down. Uh, most of my friends are men, and I've been known to lay next to them on a bed, and they don't dare get fresh with me. Yeah. Like, I I mentioned this on Chatterday. I think, like, most of my life, most of my friends have been men. Uh, or boys. Boys and then men. Boys, two men. Huh. Um. And, yeah. So. <laughs> All right, I've got a trick I'm trying to get her to do, which is to get the tree off of Danny's up. head. So come on, up. Oh, careful. <laughs> there. 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 Oh, no, it fell. That's okay. Did you get it? She got it. She got it. <laughs> Good girl. We'll train her to do this one completely pointless task. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like it's, I now have plenty of female friends, but like growing up, it was almost entirely male friends. Um, except for the group that I grew up in, all of the female friends I had were in that group. Uh, but yeah. I, uh, in terms of laying down next to a friend in bed, oh God. uh, like I have It's embarrassing. A, what's that? Your story. It's embarrassing. Oh, that one? Yes. Is that what you're about to talk about? No. Oh, never mind. There's no story that's embarrassing. I mean, I know which one you're talking about, but no, not that one. Sorry, I thought you were going to uh, go into that, and I was like, oh, no. okay. <laughs> Thank you for the bits. That, like, um, Smeagol, you got bits. 
I do know that in my sleep I get grabby. So like it's like if someone's like, "Hey, can I lay down?" It's like, okay, this is going to happen while I'm asleep. If you're not okay with that, do not sleep next to me. It's not grabby. It's cuddly. No, grabby is more accurate. I don't know. I've never slept next to you, so he's never tried to be grabby or cuddly, which yeah, I'm cool just, with. It's just one of those, like, I know that happens, and I did not know that happened at one point. You had to learn. Yeah. And uh, not, uh, it could have been a lot worse the way I learned. But uh, at that, from that point onward, it's been an explicit, like, mention. It's like, I make sure that anyone who may be sleeping in my room at all knows that. Like, if they're sleeping on my couch in my room, they get to know that, so they don't, like, decide to cuddle with me <laughs> in the middle of the night. You never know. You need to protect yourself from uh, unexpected cuddles. I need to protect them from unexpected groping. Yeesh. It's It happens when I'm asleep, so I'm just explicit about making sure everyone knows about that. Fair enough. It's not like I have a choice in the matter. You grope yourself? Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's that's probably what I meant. And uh, thank you, Paige. Did you already say thank you, Paige? Oh, you already said thank you, Paige. My brain was off on Mars. Mm -hmm. As per usual. You. Um, they want to start a cuddle cult with you, Brian. Aw. I'm a light sleeper. Um... I can't sleep if there's light. So there's that. Um, okay. So well, let me tell you. So when Keith was a adolescent, his parents tested him into like the gifted and talented program. I don't know if any of you were in that program. I was. Um, and it turned out a bunch of fucked up adults. But anyway, uh, one of those fucked up adults <laughs> became fucked up before it even entered the program. Before he ever, er, before he ever entered the program, um, because his parents basically sat him down and they were like, "Look, we took this test. You took this test, and um, what it told us is that you're very smart and you're special. And uh, so we are gonna have you take these classes for like smart and special kids, right?" Which is like, like a great way of explaining to a child what's happening, you know? Uh, unfortunately, if your child is an undiagnosed narcissistic sociopath, uh, that will go straight to their heads. Or head, because they only have one. Uh, allegedly. Um, and turn them immediately into someone with a like messiah god complex who thinks that they're better than every other person that they know um like i just imagine him like overnight just turning into like someone who's just like like ah yes of course you know and like entering class classrooms like my children would you like answers because i have them or something you know um uh, and yeah so all of his friends said that like he just like changed completely overnight um and never really like went back to what he was like before which i don't know was probably just like a normal kid what's interesting is like i went through the um or at least for i think a year um i was in the like uh what, what's her gifted program mm -hmm. and like what that taught me was that like you had was like was basically like you can do these things easier. Therefore, you should be helping people with that. Yeah, totally. That's the way that you should look at it. Or you are like, how can I use this to manipulate people into having sex with me? Yeah, and it's like the fact that it was able to convert him into that at all in the first place mm -hmm. kind of made me think that like he was already like that. Yeah, it, it was just waiting. Like, yeah, it would have, it would have like, happened just eventually. Turn it on, yeah. Um, hey. ew. Okay. There's Emma. I was going to be painting this today, and then right before we started, I noticed a crack and I had to fix it. So, 
Maybe I'll start with the rest of it, though. I just leave that part alone. Um... I have one rule. No guys are allowed to sleep over or I won't be sleeping. That is a totally fair rule. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means, though. Because I can read that in two different ways. I can guess what it means, but there's another way Yes, there that. is another way of reading it. But not that way, I'm assuming. Uh, based on context clues. Turns out you are more special okay. than other people. Hooray. Way to set him up for failure and no longer a kid. That's what the Gifted and Talented program did to all the kids who were in it. Uh, the seeds were already there. Yeah. That's strange. I didn't have sex at all when I was in the Gifted program. Maybe I wasn't that gifted. Well, he. I'm going to guess that he didn't either. Uh, I think that he learned how to manipulate people and later on figured out how to apply that to, to have sex with me. Uh, but yeah. You get a spray bottle from Drew. Um, I want some. We got ice cream earlier. It's, uh, eggnog flavored ice cream. I do remember, Paige, yes. It's delicious. Yeah, I wasn't in the CYT chat at all, so I missed it, clearly. Um, but yeah. What was I saying? Oh, so he is doing, so like, he likes to talk about how he's the smartest man in the world, that he did an IQ test and it turns out that he is the smartest man in the world and he was in Guinness World Book of Records as having the highest IQ and all this stuff. What, uh, what number did he give? I don't remember, 240? That's like, the. the... The number 240 doesn't mean anything. Like, like I, I like a number of 140? That actually means something. A number of 240 means the test broke. I don't remember, but one of the things uh, for the test that he did take was uh, the take home test. So. Wow. Yeah. Uh, 240 is a testing error. Smarter than, yeah, smarter than Einstein. Um, apparently, he is actually smart, um, but that doesn't mean that you are everything that he says. Oh, also one of the weird things, he won a judo competition when he was like 10 and still brags about it as an adult. Like that's one of his high achievements that he lists in his biographies is that he's a judo champion. He doesn't say that it happened when he was like 10, just that he's a judo champion, um, which is just so sad. Like that makes me feel sad for him. Um, judo kids yeah they're like next to the band kids but far away from the stoner kids you want to look up what um he thought his iq was yeah uh, yeah I got it. Uh, you should feel bad for whoever got second place yeah um Keith Allen Ranieri. Gross. It doesn't say there. Um, but so one of the documentaries that I watched, uh, one of the ex members of the group um, actually tracked down the Guinness World Record book. And it turns out that, yes, technically he did appear in the Guinness World Book of Records as the highest IQ, but only in a really fast first print that only appeared in Australia. And like, basically they like reissued it and took him out of it. And this was in 1988 or 89, excuse me. So yeah, <laughs> uh, he should have just said 420. So the scale for IQ is weighted for age. Performing above average at a young age skews you higher than your actual intelligence. That makes sense. Um, or you can be like me and you're a smart kid and you turn into a smart adult. Um, but you get fucked up by the gifted and talented program first. So, you know, life's a payoff. 
Um, so yeah, so the first like big con that he did was another MLM um, called Consumer Byline, and it was spelled B U Y line, not B Y um, or B I. If you're if you have a line that likes two other gendered lines, genders of lines. Um, and it was like, I'm a little confused by it, honestly, because my brain doesn't work like a scammer. Um, but it was basically like, this is pre-internet or like right when internet was starting. So most people didn't have it. And it was like, when you want to buy something, you all get together and you buy it together. And that way you get a discount or some, some bullshit like that. And basically he was just, a uh, not paying anyone uh and people like being paid i hear uh and so that kind of uh i don't think he actually went to prison for it but he definitely got in trouble and you know was shut down and everything but he still got plenty of money uh, and then one day he met nancy and like was apparently like totally entranced by her and like the two of them just talked and talked and talked and he gave her god he's such an asshole he gave her a copy of atlas shrugged and told her that she should read it because he really is reminded of the main female in the book when he talks to her and like that he really thinks that she is like his blank the blank to his blank leads because i haven't read atlas shrugged because I'm not a sociopath libertarian. Um, sorry, no offense to sociopaths or libertarians. Some offense. Um, what do you feel is more important, IQ or EQ? Um, geez, that's a Fuck you, Rob <laughs> I scored like 180 something in kindergarten because I was real good at recall and stuff for a kindergartner. Yeah. I mean, the thing about the IQ test is like, it is. I'm not sure um... I know the difference between IQ and EQ. EQ is emotional. Oh, uh, okay. So the thing about both of them I would is say e. that they are inherently flawed because someone who is an absolute brilliant human being, but not in the exact ways that the test is checking, yeah. can show up average or below average. Yeah. Standardized testing does not work. And I say I that mean, as someone who is uses. exceedingly good at it, standardized testing. Like... Uh, if it wasn't for the math section, I would have had a perfect SAT score. Uh, but here's the thing. Uh, they do have purposes and they are useful, but they, uh, they are treated as like um, accurate and they're not yeah. accurate. Oh, yeah. If you get 150 on an IQ test, you are smart. If you get a 90, you still might be smart. Just in a it different just means way. That, okay, that 90 doesn't mean anything. Yeah. A low number doesn't mean anything. A high number does. Because what? your your actual intelligence could be not that like a single number makes any sense for intelligence anyway. One of the best explanations of this that I saw was just like a one panel comic, and it was like in order to be and it's like a bunch of animals, right? And so um, there's like a fish and a bull and a monkey and a bird and an elephant and a lion, like a, a wide yeah. range of animals. And the judge animal says, all right, to be fair, we're gonna make this a standardized test. Now, everyone climb that tree. And that's basically what that is, right? Like the monkey is yeah. gonna come across as the smartest one because the monkey is particularly good at climbing trees. But that doesn't mean that the lion and the elephant and everyone else can't do anything. Um, or that they're dumb or useless or whatever people try and tell kids who can't test well. And like, let me tell you, I do not think that I am better than anyone else because I test well. Like, that is not an excellent uh, skill to have. Like, yeah, it came in handy when I was lazy in school, but like, so fucking what? How does that help me in the real world? You know? Yeah. And like I have talked to a lot of people who like have really high IQ scores, mm -hmm. and some of them are dumbest. Just, just Jesus, fuck, just holy fuck, mm -hmm. you're stupid. 
Yeah. And I've met a lot of people who like did not do well on standardized tests who are absolutely fucking brilliant. Yeah. For sure. Uh, most Americans fail EQ tests if we want to say that is more important. Yeah. EQ is very yummy ice cream cake. Um, a single number could make sense for intelligence because the different domains of what we call intelligence are highly correlated. That doesn't mean Spearman's, Spearman's G is actually a unitary characteristic for everyone, but factor analysis suggests it is for more, most people. Um, uh, standardized good. tests suck. I just I wrote a whole short story about it. Yeah, like... I feel like me saying that standardized tests suck really like, the fact that I am good at them feels like it gives me saying that a little extra oomph because I'm not just saying that because you know I didn't do well in them no I did really well in them and I think that they're dumb and you should not be judging children and their entire future based on how well they do on them um but yeah there's different ways of being smart. But yeah. Um, anyway, so... This guy. Um, he gets shut down with that. And then... Um, oh yeah, so he meets Nancy. And basically, with their powers combined, him good at uh, conning people and appearing smarter than he is, and her at literal hypnosis... Um, decide, like, wouldn't it be great if we put together this group and told everyone that we're fixing their lives and charge them thousands of dollars each time? Uh, and that's basically what they did. Um, and, like, they put together a whole thing. Like, they put a lot of work into this. There, there was a lot of prep work before they actually started conning anyone. Um, like, they definitely researched different groups and stuff and, like, took stuff from them. Like I said, like, a lot of it is taken straight from Scientology. Um, there's other stuff that, like, is very reminiscent of, like, Jonestown and Heaven's Gate. And then there's other ones that are just reminiscent of, like, uh, subsects of different religions. And, like, none of it was original, is what I'm saying. Um. And, yeah. So they started recruiting people and they were really aiming for young, beautiful people, which was easy because they uh, had like a lot of connections in LA, I believe. Uh, and that was their goal. And they also were trying to find rich people. And what really was a full game changer was when they met the two daughters of the dude who runs Seagram's like they do all the alcohol and the ginger ale and stuff um and they have like billions uh, and basically Keith and Nancy were like ooh cha-ching and like basically just started getting wild amounts of money from these women uh and so um i looked it up um because i couldn't find like his um claim of a particular number mm -hmm. but he claimed to be like the smartest or or like one of the smartest he, he thought he uh, claims to be the smartest man okay in that case uh his iq would by definition for being one out of eight billion be like 197 okay yeah, so 240 claimed, might be, it, like, completely off. I don't remember the number I heard. That's fair. I'm just like, you know, like, if he claimed, like, 240, it's like, okay, then you don't understand how statistics work. Yeah, which is honestly possible. Yeah. So. I'll try and uh, make note if I hear yeah, absolutely. it again, and then let everyone know on Thursday. Um... Yeah, so like it is possible that he could be like one in a trillion, mm -hmm. and then his IQ would be higher. But like, because like we're talking like six and a half sigma, or so, like probably like six point three, I think, uh, for like one in eight billion. 
and like that's 190 something. Uh, so he'd have to be like way less common and like only arises like every billion years out of like all of human civilization. We've only been around for a million years to be like 240 or something. Cool. So what you're saying is he's legit and telling the truth. Yeah, I mean, that's one That's one wrong interpretation. People who brag about being intelligent are likely not. For example, I'm a very stable genius. Yeah, like this guy has big Trump energy. I'm not going to lie. Like he's, if Trump wasn't an absolute, I'm going to just say nincompoop. Like, I'm just going to say nincompoop. If Trump was not a nincompoop, he would be like Keith Rainier. Um, but yeah. Uh, if you, yeah, if you were talking, I mean, like, I will mention how smart I am, but like, it took me a long time to be comfortable doing that, honestly, like, most, pretty much until I started doing this live stream. Um, and that's mostly just because, like, other people say it to me, and I'm like, oh, okay, so that is a thing that I'm not, like, imagining. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I would say that, uh, most of the time, not always, but most of the time, extremely intelligent people usually go about trying to explain things to others rather than trying to prove that they're smarter than other people it's one of those i understand this i can explain this to you so let me do that and then you can understand this as well um versus the let me demonstrate how you can never understand how my brain works yeah yeah which is exactly how this guy is um But yeah, um, doo -doo -doo. so when they get these two women on board, it is like a game changer. Um, one of the things that they are able to do with their money is get the Dalai Lama to visit and like appear to be giving Keith like his endorsement. Uh, I, I don't think that's actually what he was doing, but like it definitely looked that way. Uh, and apparently they paid him a million dollars to be there. So that's cool to know that about the Dalai Lama. Uh, I mean, there are, there is, Dalai Lama is such an interesting situation. Because if you assume that he honestly believes everything that he's saying, yeah, and then he seems perfectly reasonable. Mm -hmm. If you give him even like a scintilla of cynicism, he becomes a, a like a huge piece of shit. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like one of the it. it basically, Schrodinger's Dalai Lama. Basically, and it's one of those like, uh, and that I mean that's quote unquote this Dalai Lama. Uh, but yeah, it's um, it's kind of like the Pope. If you assume that the Pope actually believes everything that he says, the voice of God, etc., then this is a very pious human being. Put any cynicism, uh, you apply any cynicism, cynicism to him at all, and it becomes like this is a huge piece of shit, human being. Right. Yeah. Um. Okay. So they start doing these courses in the '90s, and just slowly bringing people in and growing. Um. And on, like honestly, if if he hadn't gotten distracted by all the weird sex and torture stuff, uh, like it would have grown into what Scientology is. Like I I have little doubt of that. Um, but or if he had just like waited on the sex and torture stuff, yeah, because that's what Scientology did. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because like if you look at like L. Ron Hubbard, there are no allegations against him at all um but yeah so um if you're starting your own cult uh just don't let it look like a cult until you're a while in and don't start the weird sex stuff until you're like established you know uh, let me pay you for an endorsement but the dolly really gave him an endorsement and it wasn't because he was paid to do it um, 
Well, so... I think Paige is, like, criticizing. Like, she's saying, like, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, you gave the Dalai Lama... Oh, oh, I see, I see. Dollars, but it totally wasn't because of that. I yeah. gotcha, I gotcha. That's why I think that Paige means, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's just a really big fan of his work. Um... I can never start a cult, Chink says. I'm an iconoclast. Um, I, I would not be good starting a cult. I'm self-aware enough of, to realize that. Um, I would not be good being in a cult, as we've already discussed. Uh, Scientology is still denying their cult. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Thank you, Paige. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah, it's totally a legit and not at all biased... Uh, or purchased thing. Um, da -da -boo. I'm trying to decide what to do next. Oh, I can see all these. I need to do that. Um, okay. So. I keep wanting to say David Koresh. I don't know why. Um, not Keith Rainier. I would be better as the henchman of a cult leader. I'm a sheep and a very effective one. Yeah. Yeah. I can agree with that for myself. Um, I Yeah, I could never be the leader. I can't keep a straight face. I mean, I think there's certain attributes of my personality that I could do the cult thing. Like, ethically, I could never do it. But, like, take that part out. And mm -hmm. there's certain aspects I could do, like cult leader. But I don't think I could tolerate being told what to do ever. That's why you're the like, leader. Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's either I'm not in a cult or I've started one. There's, there's not another option. <laughs> maybe I can't start one. Maybe I can't leave one. I don't know. I'm never gonna find out. I don't want to find out. But I know for a fact I couldn't like be in a cult. Everyone, Brian wants to start a cult. Jokes on y'all. You're already in the cult. You don't get a choice. <laughs> It's the blue lizard gut cult. Like, she thinks she's the leader. She's not. I am. I can't do the cult stuff. All churches are cults. Yeah. That's why I'm deeply uncomfortable with all organized religion now. Because I grew up Catholic. Uh, I, uh, I could be the leader, but I'd be, like, the right hand to the leader. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know if I could do that. I'm such a wimp. Um, but yeah. So... I can convince people in a very nice way my kids think I'm mean. <laughs> That's the job of children, I believe, to think that their parents are mean. But I don't know, maybe you are just like a mean, mean, mean lady. Um, or gentleman. I always kind of read Mary Duff as Mary, but I don't know you. Like, pronouns, please. Um, but yeah. Keith. So they were really, really uh, gunning for anyone rich, anyone famous, anyone like exceptionally beautiful, uh, anyone that they knew like as the face of the group would make them look good. Uh, one of two of the people that they got, uh, the two docu series really heavily focus on them. Uh, it's, uh, I'm a sweetheart, Mary for Maurice. Oh, I love that name. That's a lovely name. Uh, since we're talking cults, I had a thought about three years into Trump's reign. Is Trump the leader of the biggest cult in America in human history? No, but he is a cult leader. Uh, just there's been some really, really big cults. Uh, I was just thinking what Brian said about aren't when the cult, the blue lizard gets cult. It's very close to the blue oyster cult. Just saying. Also, I decided to do a little lizard on the bottom of the feet. Oh, I can't see if it's showing or not. So, I did a little lizard. There's for Anna. See if she gets a little lizard. I just decided to do that today. Thank you, Drew. Um... All right.
<laughs> so. So they started having this group. And in Nexium, one of the original spinoffs of it, or Nexium might. It might have actually come before Nexium, technically. That detail doesn't matter. Um, there's a like subgroup within Nexium called the Executive Success Program, or ESP, and you had to be like invited to be a part of it. And it was basically. And you have to know that they're going to invite you ahead of time. What? What's the what's the letters again? Oh, because ESP. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Uh, yeah, I had that thought for a while, and then it took over. <laughs> like, um, bonus points for the BOC reference. BOC. What did Blue I say? Blue Oyster Cult. Oh, Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah. I love Blue Oyster Cult. Um, yeah. So, the ESP, they... the followers in the ESP, like the members, they called themselves Espians, because ESP, ESP. Uh, and then now they call themselves Expians, and I think that that's really cute. Uh, but, you know, you gotta find the humor where you can and stuff like this. And... Sounds like they're acting like it wasn't that bad. Get it? Get it? Get it? Get it? Acting? Because of Espian. Oh. Mwah, mwah. Uh... And so, yeah, so basically it was like these seminars and you would pay thousands of dollars for each one. And uh, like it was just about how to like be a better business person, how to start your own business, um, how to network, stuff like that. And like Keith would come out sometimes rarely, like he rarely shows up. Um, and like. Where was I going with that? I thought of another part of it and I got distracted. Let me talk about the other part that I thought of. So one of the things in Nexium that's weird is that they have like these like tiny satin scarves. Like it's not even a scarf. It's like it only comes up to like here really. Uh, and they're different colors and they're thin and they look like they're like cut up cheap graduation gowns. I don't know what they're actually made out of, but they, they look like sheet polyester. Um, and... Like a sash, no, like like they would wear it like a, an, an untied scarf that they would wear. Uh, and it, it says what level you're at. So when you are, and it's like karate, but weirder. Uh, and so like the ultimate level is the level that keith is at obviously uh and no one else ever gets to that level except for him and his level is white and it uh symbolizes that he is a student of life because you know all guys who call themselves student of life like those are the winners um <laughs> Let's see. I mean, Don't Fear the Reaper is like, like, how can you not love it, you know? Um, but I had a an album of like, uh, it was like, it was like a mix of all of their like best songs or whatever. And um, yeah, I loved that thing. I loved all of it. But uh, yeah, so in order to move up the ranks with the sashes um or the scarves or whatever uh you had to take more and more of the seminar class things and as you would move further up like so there were different colors so you would pull on like you would fully level up to a different color but then some of the colors there were stripes and you there were four stripes that you could earn so you would earn one at a time kind of like you know like military stuff um and uh don't forget the reaper is a great song oh yeah there's definitely so much more to the band for sure uh that's just you know classic uh but yeah so you 
had to take all these classes and part of it just like Scientology was that you had to take the classes over again in order to like reinforce like before you could move up so basically like every time you took a new course you also had to take all of the courses that you took before that like you had to take them again um and I'm assuming that they gave some sort of discount for that but like my god the amount of money that they took from these people it's wild um who burning for you is a good song gateway song yeah um mm -mm. yeah so like uh one of the people who are like big on speaking out against nexium is an actress named sarah something <laughs> i don't remember what her last name is off the top of my head I'm, we know i'm terrible with names uh and like she was the one who was like she was one of the big whistleblowers she was the one that like the new york times article that came out first it was about her and if you've seen pictures of, if you've seen a picture of the brand you've most likely seen the picture of her brand that she showed for the new york times article uh and i'll stop derailing now uh don't fear the reaper married off oh yeah it's a great song it's the one that Will Ferrell does the cowbell to in the Christopher Walken SNL sketch. No. No. Be polite. Thank you. Good girl. Good girl. Um. But yeah, so... So in one of the documentaries I watched, I don't know which one, because I watched many, uh... There, she talks about how, like, at first she thought that the that the scarves were so stupid, um, and like they looked weird, and like, cause they do, they look really weird. Like, it's a weird size and weird material, and like, it just it it looks like a cult. Like, you put that thing on and you look like you're in a cult immediately. Uh, and so she was kind of like, that looks really dumb. And like, why does everyone care so much? And also part of it is that um, you have to bow when you enter a room. And like, there's an order that you're supposed to do it in according to rank. Uh, and then there's this whole thing about how you do a handshake. And it's like... Um, I need... I need... No, I need your hands for a demonstration. So if I'm above Brian, it has to be like this, not like this, it's like this. And so what would it be? So I put my hand above yours because I'm ranked higher than you. And so you put your other hand like below mine. And like, that's how we shake hands. Like it's this whole thing. And like, it's also like how you position your feet is a whole other thing and it's like if you if you have your left foot forward a little bit more it means that you want to dominate the person or some it's this whole like thing. the second someone told me there was a right way to shake hands i'd be like i'm going to only do it wrong now <laughs> yes exactly. yeah you and i would not be good in a cult yeah it'd just be like oh I, you're especially if we were sitting next to each other in a cult yeah I'd be like, okay we're gonna fuck all of this this place is gonna burn to the ground imagine if we went to school together Oh my god. Our teachers would hate us so much. <laughs> or love us. Yeah. No middle ground. We'd have some teachers Sarah that were Edmonds. like, you're my favorite student ever. I believe... And some teachers are like, I swear to god, I don't know why we're not allowed to kill children. That is basically my entire school experience right there. <laughs> That's my relationship with my teachers. Uh, Sarah Edmondson, I believe, is correct. Yeah. Uh, she's really pretty and she's um, like... she. The thing is with all of these actresses who got pulled in is that they were all like on the way like Allison Mack was doing really well like besides Smallville she was in a bunch of other random shit and like she was definitely on track to become an actual like big star um and then got distracted by a cult uh and Sarah Edmondson I think like yeah she I I don't know she could have gone either way she could have like remained like a c-list or she could have you know progressed but uh Uh, hey Chris, lovely to see you. 
Your parents would have been called daily. Yeah, for sure. Um, I would have definitely had more than one detention in high school. Um, oh, I don't know what my one detention in high school was for. I was wearing clogs. That's it. I wasn't wearing the right shoes, and I got a you detention. Were what? Clogs. Oh. They didn't have a back, so detention. Uh, and it was like towards the end of my senior year too. But yeah, uh, sounds like that jujitsu title he got as a kid, Sash. Yeah, like he really. None of his stuff is original. It's all taken from other people or other groups or whatever. Uh, instead, Alice and Max doing time in the big house. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she really got pulled in. Like, if we're going to go back to, like, the Nazi officer um, allegory, or not the Nazi, but, like, the concentration camp prisoner who's forced to be a guard. Like, if we're going to go back to that allegory, like, she's the one who got, like, promoted to, like, the top and was, like, as brutal as possible to, like, show uh the guards over her how serious she was and how you know like she's that she's that one it's that i i was just following orders you took your orders directly from hitler yeah no you ran, ran the she can't camp. she can't even do that because she was like coming up with stuff herself it was mostly from him but she, like there's an audio of the two of them on like a lovely walk because he would always walk like that and usually in the middle of the night he's very nocturnal which i can't judge because i fall asleep around 8 a.m sometimes usually um but yeah, like lucky. yeah and uh so he's very nocturnal and it would drive people crazy but uh one of the things is like he liked taking late night walks and so he would like call someone and be like do you want to go on a walk with me and it would be like i don't care that it's 4 a.m like this is like the highest honor ever and most of these things also got recorded because everything he said got recorded because he was their messiah um and where is i going with that oh so there's an audio recording of Keith and Ali uh, on a walk and like discussing the brands and like planning for the brands and like the ceremony and how they're gonna do it and everything. And like, it's weird because she's like really quiet, uh, probably because she's sleep deprived and starved. Uh, but um, she's definitely like participating and you know, like uh, it's not just him, you know? He, he had a willing participator or a willing co-conspirator or whatever you want to call it. Uh, like, I kind of feel bad for her, but not really. Like, you did this to yourself, you know? But, like, at the same time, she is still a victim. Uh, in New York Times interview, claimed to have come up with the idea for branding people during the DOS and So she says that she came up with it to protect him. He came up with it. She's just saying like, no, 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 that was me. That wasn't him. That was totally me. Just like Charles Manson's girls were like saying that they did all the stuff that he did um, to protect him because they are brainwashed by him. Uh, so same thing. Uh, in uh, Nixium's inner circle, masters recruited slaves who could become masters when they recruited more members. Yeah, the so DOS was another MLM. Uh, and oh my God, it's so fucked up. It's so fucked up. Uh, DOS stands for some Latin words that translate into like uh, the female slaves under the dominant master, uh, which is cool. And like when you were brought into DOS, it was like, so first off, you had to be in Jeunesse already, uh, I believe, I'm pretty sure. And like, what would happen would be so i'm just gonna like uh dominus of sequius sororium there we go oh yeah which like, yeah, literally means master over slave women yeah and but those slave women are also like enslaved women but yeah uh are also like a, a sorority as well it's like yeah, yeah. Exactly. so there's a bunch of meaning in there because that's how latin works like uh the phrase slave woman <laughs> um like the woman applies to all of that as a group not like like um yeah it's like the women the slave women is a group not just like yeah. a bunch of women who are slaves yeah yeah like i'm trying to figure out how to explain that in english but i don't know how yeah 
It's, I don't know it's if Latin. English can do that. Uh, yeah, like everyone who translated has a slightly different translation. Uh, because that's how Latin works. And yeah, so... All right, so here's what happened to Sarah. So Alice and Mac came up to her and... No, it wasn't Alice and Mac. It was Laura, who was the daughter of Nancy, one of the co-founders. Um, oh, so Nancy and Keith were, like, seen as, like, the highest of the high. And to, like, even encounter them was, you know, like, the highest privilege. And um, they had titles that you had to address them by. Uh, so Nancy was prefect and Keith was vanguard uh, and the name vanguard such a fucking nerd in like the worst ways uh, was, it was an arcade game that he liked to play and that they had uh, that he had in his basement uh, I just want to say prefect and, and I, I know for I know that uh, a prefect is like a thing like in terms of like um, like bureaucracy or whatever uh, and I also know that like the Ford Motor Company actually made a car called the Ford Prefect yep. but all I can hear is just Ford Prefect from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide yeah. and it's like that you, you named yourself after the goofiest goddamn character in history you dumbass I'm going to guess that she was probably a fan of the series that we don't talk about that makes sense. Yeah. Because uh, that's definitely a title in that for like high exalted one, but below the headmaster. Well, it, uh, a prefect in it's that, a real thing in, in context England. context is like um, someone who it, uh, it's basically an, um, what do you call it? Um, not RN. Like um, when you're in college dorms and you have a uh, like someone on your floor that like makes sure things are. Oh, all right. RA. Basically, it's an RA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. And so, he was the vanguard. And uh, one of the things that they did, uh, and this is one of the things that, like, kind of made me go, like, oh, this reminds me of the group that I grew up in, was uh, they would have a week every year that was over his birthday week. And it was called Vanguard Week, which, like, out of context, is like, Vanguard. Oh, like, that's a fun name. But when you realize that that's his name, it's they're like this is Keith week and we're gonna like make this whole week all about Keith and uh he settled for only a week not the entire year <laughs> no he had the whole year this was just like the one that they did in the Catskills like they're in Dirty Dancing alright so this is like so he has the whole, the whole year and then he's like also this week during my year yes. is also my week yep. by the way it's of my birth so that day during that week is my day of my week of my year and also you're all my slaves and i'm god well, no this was nexium this wasn't dos or jana or janice okay. this was nexium so this was like a god. yes yeah yeah uh so this was like a like team building like grow together i agree like... with sock puppy uh that definitely means something different to me both nerds um yeah, like, it honestly looks like they, they had, like, a really fun time. One of the weird things that, like, you're like, oh, this is a cult. Um, you're not allowed to take any pictures or anything, but the whole week is being, like, fully recorded by the Nexium team. So, like, there's pictures and videos of everything, but you're not allowed to take any of them. And that is suspicious AF. Um... Hydrate, thank you. Good timing. I am thirsty. It's a computer thing, Paige. Um, but yeah, so uh, they also call it V-Week, and it's like the highlight of everyone's year, and there's lots of bonding and everything. And then like at the very end is um, like a performance night where they all perform for him. And like at this point, there are centers all over the country and some international there's a bunch in mexico still um and uh like they would be practicing this for months it wasn't just like they put it together that week it was like they'd been practicing in their centers for months and uh it like you have to do the thing look at the chat 
I did. Oh, that give one. Smeagol love. Oh, I didn't see that one. Oh, Smeagol, you get so much love. Nefesta, everyone loves you. You're so cute and good. You are so cute and good. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She's losing her mind. V week like virginity? Yeah, you'd think, right? Um. <laughs> Um, and yeah, so they're doing all these performances and like, it starts out fairly innocuous. It's just like, oh, like this nice, like talent show that you're doing, you know, like lots of like mo almost every retreat I've ever been on. That's more than like a day. Uh, they end with a talent show. Like that's just a, w it's like a team building thing. And then you're like showing everyone like, look how team buildy we were and stuff like that's, that's a way that these things work. Um, not just cults. So, I mean, like, it sounds like a lot of this was cloaked in fairly normal stuff. Really normal stuff. Not, and then just, like, and then at the end, they're like, oh, also cult. And they're like, oh, wait, what? Well, so, it, if you get into Nexium, Nexium is very normal besides the MLM factor of it. Like, it is not suspicious on its own. It actually seems like something where they're like, we genuinely want to help people. And, like, like this is why I was questioning, like, would this work on me? I don't know. Um, until I realized, no, it wouldn't because I'm a weirdo. Um, uh, it feels like it screams run, yeah. Uh, and... Where's I going with that? Fuck. What did you just say? I have no idea. Oh, great. Cool. Um, time out V week. Okay, so, um, like... Yeah, so you're doing this talent show, right? And, like, Keith has not been around all week. Even though this is a week all about him, he hasn't been around. And this is very much by design. Um, because... Don't fuck him. Uh, like, all week, everyone is telling all of the new people, like, this week is all about the Vanguard. It's all about Keith. And let me tell you how amazing this guy is and just like gushing about him and being like we're doing this talent show thing because we love him so much and like he's really affected all of our lives and blah 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 and so by the time it's the end of the week and the talent show is happening um and this is not like uh like malicious on the part of the people who are fangirling like they're all victims who fell for his charms and stuff right um so he shows up at the end of the week and everyone's like oh my gosh that's keith that's keith and like people will be like i am so surprised at how normal he looks like he looks like he's just like a person because that's how they've made you feel by the end of it like keith is not just a person he is a god um and like and that's the like not creepy version of things like that's the normal version of things um so yeah so you are in nexium and then if you are like someone who's working and achieving in Nexium, you will be invited to join either Jeunesse or... I'm gonna say DOS? No, DOS is the, is the other one. What's the other one? It's the d Defenders of something. It doesn't matter. Okay, so you're asked to join Jeunesse, which is the female empowerment group but not the sex cult yet this is just a female empower this is like the stepping stone in between nexium and sex cult um and that's the one where when you go in keith is there and he's like women you want to know why we hate you so much blah 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 um then there's the men version and i don't know which is I don't know which is worse. I want to say the men's version is worse, but the women's, like... Training someone how to be abusive versus training someone to be abused. Like, um, it's... Oh, that is difficult. Yeah, and especially because, yeah. like, with the men, it's, like, hypothetical. And, you know, like, presumably some of them took it home and everything. But, like, with the women, they're actively grooming them to be abused by them. You know? Whereas with the men, it's more of, like, a... Here's how you abuse. Take that into the world. Um, so I'm going to do a couple content warnings here. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some rough stuff. Uh, and I'm not sure how to sum it all up. So just be aware. Um, 
We're going to be talking about sexual abuse and child abuse. So if that is a problem, cover your ears and I will do something like this when I'm all done talking about it, okay? Um, or mute it or whatever. Um, so the videos that I saw of him talking to the men, um, like I've mentioned already, he has this habit of like talking in a way that comes across like he is giving you facts. Like it's, and he talks fast and confidently. And so, and the thing is that he has the assumption and is like souls on this assumption. You cannot budge him from this assumption that what he thinks and feels, everyone else thinks and feels too. Like if they think and feel at all, like everyone is agreement in agreement with whatever it is that he says is a thing. If that makes sense, right? Yeah, okay. Um, and Where was I going with that? I'm, um, the men. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, he's talk so in these videos that I see, it's things like, uh, you know how, like, all you want to do is fuck. Like, that's all you want to do. You just want to fuck, 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 fuck. That's a direct quote that I just gave you. Um, you want to fuck that and you want to fuck that. that. And, and then you see a woman and you're like, I want to fuck her. Or no, sorry. You see a woman and you're like, fuck. And then you grab it and you fuck it. It. He says it. Um. Okay, here's the really, really awful one. This is bad. Okay. Um. He talks about like what would it take for me to convince you that like god i hate this so much i hate this so much what would it take to convince you that raping a baby is normal like and then this is what he actually says uh i could make it a very rapeable baby it's on video he was proud of that he filmed that he thought that those were words of wisdom that needed to be documented forever And he just said it and no one like stood up and went, what the fuck? Everyone just kind of sat there like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, so this is the, this is the stepping stone one. So this is the, if you prove yourself that like, we see that you have what it takes to be a part of the really, really bad one. This is our, this is our like, it's like the semifinals. And then you get to the finals. Is that, yeah, I feel like that's the best way to describe it. Um, yeah, I know. Oh, I'm all done. So if you were on mute, we're good. Um, yeah. I was really worried that there was going to be a raid during that. <laughs> like, that was a genuine fear of mine. A uh, bit of a relief. <sighs> uh, not that we're going to get... I feel like that's like the worst thing for me to repeat that he says. Like it's bad, obviously. Um, so okay, hopefully my content warnings and everything did the trick, and no one is exceedingly dis distressed and upset. And I'm very sorry if you are. Um, I'm gonna try. I don't think anything else is gonna be that distressing. So, um, it's a pretty awful thing to say. Yeah, yeah. To put it mildly, like. That should get you in prison on its own. Just that right there. I mean, like, it's maybe beaten to death, like, but not by the government. Yeah. Yeah. And then the person who did that should, like, go to jail for five days. <laughs> because that, like, don't do, oh, no, don't do that. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. So... That's um, Jeunesse and the dude version. Um, I don't think, as far as we know, there's no third level for the dudes. Like, um, that one is like their like inner circle. Like that's where you make it, right? Because he has no interest in turning men into sex slaves. Uh, distressed yet upset? No, because I knew this cult was bad. Okay, good. Uh, I was just reading. Uh, I mean, not good that you're distressed. You know what I mean, hopefully, by now. You know me. 
Uh, I was just reading about one of my favorite actors, Grace Park, was involved in this cult and had a significant role in it too. Um, is she from Battlestar Galactica? Uh, and she's um, she's Asian, I think. I'm trying to picture her because I'm so bad with names. But yeah, um, she wasn't one of the really, really, really bad ones, but she was definitely made it into like the inner circle. Um, so. Hawaii Five O, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, they got some. Uh, they didn't get anyone like Tom Cruise, John Travolta, but they got people who were like on in route, in route, on route, en route. Wow, I read that all the time. En route. There we go. Uh, she's in a million little things. I haven't watched that. Um. I've also not seen Battlestar Galactica, even though I know I would love it. It's like on my eventually list. Um, it's also kind of weirdly loosely based on Mormonism. Like they they took some uh, like symbolism and names from it, and like I think there's some like um, minor like influences in the same way that like uh, Oh Brother We're Out There has regular uh, Protestant Christian influences, like that sort of thing. Okay. Interesting. Um, but yeah. Uh, so. Uh, so in the documentary, the two docu series, uh, the main focus is on this mother and daughter. Uh. Um, Catherine and India, and their last name is a very unique one. Um, it begins with an O and has a Z in it. Uh, oh my dog, Battlestar Galactica is amazing. I know, like, it's, it's very much on my list. And part of the reason why I haven't watched it yet is because I've seen the Portlandia sketch where they watch Battlestar Galactica. Uh, and I know that'll happen with me. And I need to time that right basically uh they address a lot of social issues how many malko is in it he's super progressive and a champion of mental health so that's cool oxenberg thank you okay it wasn't a z it was an x um so oxenberg so catherine is the mom and she was in dynasty the soap opera and was like a star and like everyone treats her like like b-list I'd never heard of her before this. Maybe maybe other people have. Um, but yeah, she seemed like kind of like B-lister. But the thing is, like, her mom is the princess of Yugoslavia. Uh, or a princess. I don't know how Yugoslavia works. Or worked. Yugoslavia doesn't exist anymore, right? Uh, I don't believe so. Let me double check. Um, but she still is a princess. Either way. Um, and... Correct. It no longer exists. And... Uh, ended during the World War II. Or, well, okay, it was in exile during World War II and stopped existing in 92. And it had a hereditary monarchy through 1941 and was officially a republic after World War II. Uh, it was uh, Marxist Leninist for three years, Titoist. <laughs> uh, so socialist parliamentary constitutional republic um, so it used to have a uh, monarchy but it did yeah. not after World War II so her mom was born princess and now maintains like a title uh, and so uh, and they're also related to the British royal family I believe that it's her mom and Prince Charles are second cousins something like that um, which like when you're British nobility, second cousins is basically like brother and sister. Like it, it, they are so, uh, they care so much about who they're related to and how related they are and everything. Um, like I have, like everyone I've met. So my grandma was from England. And so all of the family I've met from England, I get introduced as like, this is your second cousin twice removed. <laughs> like, um, and I recently kind of figured out what everything means. But yeah, 
uh, English people take their relatives very seriously. They marry second cousins. Yeah, once you're away from first cousins, it's more acceptable. Um, but yeah. Um, like genetically at third cousins, like it's, it's fine. It doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Like um, everyone's related yeah. to everyone. We all came from Africa at some point. Um, but yeah. So. Oh, okay. Are you British as well, Mary Duff? Um, your grandma was British. Oh, I love British grandmas. I miss my British grandma. She was a little English sassy or... lady. British? English? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She... Like yes. Yeah. No, she's she is English or was English. Um, and from Sussex. Like, apparently, if Hitler had um, continued with his plan to invade England, like the point that he was planning on invading, it would have like gone straight through where she lived. And like the way that she told it was like, and you wouldn't be here. Uh, which is extremely true. Uh, the doctor that branded the victims called Keith a genius and didn't regret branding the women. She was also stripped of her medical license to practice. She, there's two doctors involved. One of them has officially been stripped of their license and the other one is still under review. I can't remember, um, Dr. Danielle something is the one that you're talking about. She's the one who did a lot of the branding. Um, and yeah, she was very heavily involved. Uh, my grandma was, I'm Colombian from England. Ooh, that is a fun mix. I like that. Um, I have, I'm a mutt. Like, I know I just look like a basic white girl, but I am like mutt. Um, so the white half. Oh, did my mic go out? Hold on, let me check. Uh -oh. No, I think it's still working. Okay. Um, so the, the white half is English, Irish, Scottish, German, and there's French way, way, way back. And then the Hispanic side is Argentina, Spain, Italy, and then there's um, Peru and either Brazil or Portu Portugal. I'm, I'm not positive on that one. The Hispanic side is a lot harder to research. Um, <laughs> did his butt go out? <laughs> But bot is amazing. I'm such like, a fan. They're often really just annoying, but once once in a while they deliver and that's why they stick around. Yep, exactly. Um I don't know how many times that show has made me cry. Ooh, which show? Sorry, I got distracted by uh did his butt go out. Uh Oh, oh, Battlestar Galactica, duh. Um do. Me too. And I look Indian. Interesting. It wasn't Nancy the psychiatric nurse. So Nancy's the one who's currently under review, and then Danielle is the one who has had her license revoked. Okay. Um. Yeah. So Keith has officially been sentenced. Uh, he has been sentenced to 120 years. And from what I last saw, I might have not seen the most recent information but from what i last saw because of covid everything was really delayed and most if not all of the women are still like under house arrest on hold before they get their actual sentencing like they've all been i believe they've all yeah because he was last so they've all been convicted but they haven't gotten their sentence uh english scottish india italian and one black english was my grandfather wow i much of the world unite you know I'm sorry for your loss, Jess. Uh, and all that was happening here. Um, the topic that I am supposedly talking about. Wow, Drew, that is so white. That's like all the white. I love it. I mean, I don't love it that you're white, but like, you know. Uh, George. I wonder if any of your ancestors ended up in Georgia because of the... Um, like the Scottish um, post-Jacobite, what is it, clearances? Uh, a lot of them ended up in the South. Uh, 
And yeah. So, uh, Nancy is avoiding prison is the last update I saw. Yeah, I don't think Allie's been sentenced yet, for sure. Um, at least they're at war with each other, for real. Um, okay. So, oh my gosh, there's so much. There's so much. Like, it doesn't matter how much I cover today. Thursday is still going to be bonkers. Uh, maybe you're related. I found out I was related to one of my friends when I did my genealogy. That was cool. Like, very, very distantly, but still cool. Um, okay. So, if you are in Jeunesse and... I don't... I'm guessing Keith is the one who decides, but... Uh, when... When you're part of any of these groups, one of the main things that you have to do is recruit other people because it's an MLM. Um, and they took it really seriously. And it was something like, I can't remember if it's Doss or Jeunesse, but like one of them, like you had to recruit at least one person a month, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a lot. Um, considering all of the like commitments and the money and everything, like, yeah. Uh, so, uh, all right, so I'm just going to, like, talk about, like, how Sarah described her experience getting into DOS. Uh, ancestors went to the South just to, you know what, bad me. Uh, okay, so she had, uh, she was, like, best friends with the daughter of Nancy, aka Prefect. Uh, and she was literally raised in Nexium, like, because her mom is, you know, VP, basically. And so it was like her entire life had Nexium in it. And so she was really, really gung-ho about it. And I believe that she's one of the ones waiting for prison sentences right now. Uh, and so she became like best friends with this woman, Sarah, the actress that I've mentioned a couple times, who's like heavily featured in, um, both of the docu-series. Um, Allison was sentenced to three years. Wow. That is not enough. Uh, yeah. Like he definitely got like the prison sentence he deserves, but it doesn't look like any of the women are getting the ones that they deserve. Even though I think that like there should be leniency on account of their victim, Hood? Victimhood? Victimosity? Uh, like, right. Words are hard. under a decade is too little for any of them. Like, you need to have them in prison long enough to, like, fully deprogram and, like, actually, hopefully become better people, but not necessarily under the U.S. Pro uh, prison system. I mean, it's like, if they did something wrong and need to go to jail or prison, then it should definitely be longer mm -hmm. or they shouldn't go to jail at all because they're entirely victims like this half-assing is like that yeah. doesn't make any sense like either they are horrific criminals or they are just victims yeah like th like they did these things either because they're victims or because they're criminals well like um like the manson girls for example um it took them a couple years but they snapped out of it like once they were away from her yeah it like there uh the movie charlie says it's on netflix it's starring M matt smith from doctor who as charles manson phenomenally oh my god like he i didn't know matt smith could do that like and... he plays a short guy despite being the tallest person in every scene yeah he's over six feet tall and he's managing to play a short dude <laughs> like that alone yeah anyway i really recommend charlie says there's a vod if you're interested where i'm doing like a commentary for it it's way way that way one's probably, it's probably gone, gone now. Yeah. um i should probably upload all those to youtube or something yeah we should at some point yeah although i mean like some of them are meh but yeah yeah, yeah. the good ones yeah um but yeah charlie says i really recommend it it's on netflix uh and it's no, it is. It does have violence. It's not like, it's not like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood violence. Yeah, it's not Tarantino. But it, 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 it does happen. I mean, it's about murders. 
you know, and well, it's not about murders. It's about their deprogramming, but their deprogram, their programming involves murders. Uh, and yeah, so you basically just get to watch the deprogramming process when they're in prison. Uh, it's really good. I really liked it. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. I should really do a Charles Manson week, though. Or not oh, week, yeah. probably a day. I could probably do a week. Yeah, I think a week. I could definitely right. do it. Maybe I'll do that have enough next goals week. That even if you do it like basically the same thing and like rehash things on two different days, you're gonna notice things and yeah. different people may be able to show up. So, um, yeah, you should do, do it on a week when there's like a uh, like a major holiday that week. That way, in case anyone can't see one of them, they can see the other one, and you just do kind of like both days. You're just talking about the same stuff. See, here's the thing for next week. I need next week's topic to be a topic that I already know pretty well because the book I've been waiting for for two years arrived today and I'm not able to start reading it until Friday and I want to read it. <laughs> so, uh, okay, like, yeah, we'll figure out on Sunday, like, we'll come up with <laughs> options for Saturday. Like, all of the, uh, uh, that's what I meant. Uh, on Saturday, we'll come up with only options for things that you already, like, really know. And yeah, like, I could do a refresher time. and I'll yeah. be good. Um, cause, oh my God, I am so excited that this, like they kept on delaying it and putting it later. Um, okay. Hold on. Um, you know, in the U S they aren't getting what they need to deprogram or anything while in prison. Yeah, definitely. Um, remind me to come back to that when I'm catch up with, uh, chat cause short people are so hard to understand racist. I know, I know that's what I do. I'm basically Randy Newman when it comes to short people. If you don't understand that Google Randy Newman, short people. Uh, from what I saw and read, she actually turned on him and had all the recordings and evidence that they needed to convict him as well. Okay, then yeah, definitely a shorter sentence for, like, that level of cooperation. Uh, my great-grandfather came after the Indian girl he fell in love with when they sold her in slavery. He brought, he bought her and left her, or left to a beautiful island called San Andres Island that used to be a part of England. Oh, that is such a mix of emotions. Like, I want that to be like a book or a movie. Uh, Jang's book, no. Um, there's an author that I love called Sarah J. Mass. Uh, she wrote a couple book series. Um, one, like the one that introduced me to her is called The Court of Thorns and Roses. Uh, the first book is the weakest in the series, but it's still really good. Uh, and the first book is basically like Beauty and the Beast meets Hunger Games. Uh, but then after that, after that first book, it becomes like its own thing completely. Like, and it's a really awesome thing. Uh, and then the other one that she's already written is called Throne of Glass. And that one is really difficult to describe without spoiling. And the description I finally landed on that is not spoilery, uh, or at least as little spoilers as possible, is that it's if the Witcher was a female. That's what that is. Uh, like a female assassin. Yeah, because he, yeah, like, uh, so that's Throne of Glass. And then there's a new series that she started two years ago. So the first book came out two years ago, and it's called Crescent City. And I don't know how to describe it. It's really weird. It's really good. It's really weird. It's very, like, in the middle of sci-fi fantasy. Uh, I definitely recommend the first book. I, like, the second I finish it, I'm like, I want to read this immediately again. Uh, and so I'm really excited because the second book finally came out. Uh, and yeah, so... Uh, Saturday, we're going to be voting on topics I already know fairly decently. <laughs> yeah. uh, I had a friend who used to sing that song to me. Oh, I don't know what song we're talking about now. Did I what song? I'm not sure either. I saw, I read the comment and I was confused too. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so back to the thing about people not getting deprogrammed in prison. Uh, this is something that Damien Eccles uh, from the West Memphis 3, if you weren't around for my hyper fixation on that uh he talks he's very passionate about that because he was um sure oh that song oh oh i'm so sorry uh it's such a like a horrible song but it's funny also but it's not i have very complicated feelings about that song i guess and i guess i can't really understand because i'm not short but that's awful. I would never sing that to a short person, ever. I would just sing it to myself at home. Um, 
Okay, so Damien is very outspoken because he was on death row for 18 years for a crime he did not commit. Uh, and like talks about the people that he encountered there and what he witnessed and everything. His book is phenomenal. Uh, and like says like, unless they are on death row like I was, you are putting these people in here or they're sentenced to life or whatever. You're putting these people in here with the assumption that they are going to be released into the world. So you're taking in these people who are maybe like petty criminals, if they're criminals at all, and then you're turning them into hardened criminals with what you're exposing them to in prison. And then you're unleashing them on the world. Like, um, I'm pretty sure I talked about it on here before, but like Bonnie and Clyde, Clyde went to prison um, for like a really nothing robbery. Uh, and was like the sweet dude and left prison like a hardened criminal. Like he had learned how to crime and did so. Um, but yeah, I'm still hyper-focused on the West Memphis 3. That is I mean, true. all of that's intentional. Like that entire system of like uh, treating people horrifically so they become uh, hardened criminals so that they can continue to use them as free labor period, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et, cetera et cetera. Like that's, that all of that's happening exactly the way it's supposed to, like it's intended. Yeah, that's true. Um, ever read any Michael Moorcock? No, I can't say I have. I don't, but I love that last name. Uh, like Rocket. Of course you do. That's a fantastic last name. Are you Are telling you me if uh, you had that last name, you would not be obsessed with the fact that that's your last name? I mean, like that's a porn star name. Why the hell are why the hell is Michael Moorcock writing books? <laughs> he already has his true calling and it's in his name. Uh US prison system is all about punishment, it has nothing to do with rehabilitation. Yeah. Punishment and exploitation. Um but yeah, so Okay. Back to the actual topic, if I can remember where I was. Um, does anyone remember where I was topic wise? Cause uh, it was something involving words mm -hmm. and noises. Words, yeah, probably some sort of crime. Something, maybe. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. Um, how about? Patrick Rothfuss. Oh, um, I have his, what's it called? Name of the Wind? It's been on my to-read list for literally years. Uh, I'll get there eventually, supposedly, in theory. Um, okay. Let me go to... I'll go back to where I was talking about uh, like how they recruited Sarah into DOS. So... Um, as I said already, but if you have just come in, uh, DOS uh, is uh, an initialization of a Latin phrase that means like... like the, Dominus Obsequious uh, Sororium. Thank you. Um, like the master commanding over his group of female slaves. Like that's what the name means. Um, but when they are... Um, I've only heard it's amazing. Uh, some of my friends, it's their favorite book. Uh, and they are, I think the new one just came out or like it keeps on getting delayed or something. I don't know. There's been a lot of talking about the new one for a long time. Like, I guess he's George R. R. Martining it. Um, but yeah, so if they decided that you would be a good fit with DOS, and again, we don't know how this was decided, but I'm going to guess it was Keith being creepy. Um, just a safe bet. And find on that. Uh, what came out? I'm not sure. I don't know. Ruffle. Uh. Oh, the new book. Um, I don't know. Like, I just know that there's like a whole thing about how long it's taken and everything. Um, sorry. Like, did it come out? Maybe. Sorry. I know that was cool. 
I'm a terrible person. My apologies. Uh, but yeah, so... Oh. So the way that she was recruited was that her friend that she trusted, uh, Laura, the daughter of uh, Nancy the Prefect, um, came up to her and told her, like, I, I'm... I'm a part of this secret group and I want to tell you more, but I can't. Um, like, I think you'd be really good too, but I can't tell you anything until I have some collateral. And like, the more I've learned about this cult, and this is why it really pays off how like obsessive I am with my research and how many different sources I'd get and everything is because like each time I'm getting a completely different angle and different information that the other people didn't include and like, and I'm also part of that. Like I am definitely leaving out a bunch of stuff that other people do cover, you know? Um, but that's why I try and get like as many as possible because each time I'm getting more and more and it's also sticking in my brain better. Uh, so, my da -da. what was I saying? Oh, right. So, uh, truly, like, they're grooming you from like the very start, uh, and it is very sneaky and very evil. Uh, so we are gonna get into collateral because it's a big, big thing with this, um. But, like, let me, uh, so the way that, like, you are groomed for this process is that, uh, like, back in Nexium, like, they, they're so clever with their manipulation. Like, one of the first things that they'll tell you is, like, that you only grow when you are outside of your comfort zone. And so there's going to be things that they say that are going to make you uncomfortable. And that's good because that means it's working. Um, and that, like, if you leave because you're uncomfortable, then, like, you know, that means you're weak or whatever. I don't know. Um, and, and so that's really interesting because, like, there's just a grain of truth in there, which is that yeah, if you're outside of your comfort zone, or if you are growing, you're outside of your comfort zone. That does not mean that if you're outside of your comfort zone that you are growing. Yep. And They're like, really that good just, at that. Like, that screams at me. Yeah. And I, it's fascinating that it doesn't scream at everyone else. Yeah. Um, that's exactly correct. Uh, and so that is their way of making it so that when they say stuff like the baby thing and it makes you uncomfortable, you're like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Like, I, if I'm thinking bad things, like, uh, one of the things that they took directly from Scientology is that, like, anyone who, uh, like, goes against what they're doing is a suppressive person. Like, that's even the same word that they use. Ah! I hear it, but I don't see it! <laughs> oh, uh, $27. Oh, yay! $27! Thank you so much! Welcome! <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Hello, Rachel. Rachel Letney. Um, lovely to see you, 27. Haven't seen you in a little bit. Scottish uh, raid. I like that. Fantastic. I think we're no longer going to be going over any of the abuse parts of it. Just only referring to the fact that there were some of that. Um, I don't know. I, I want to leave that okay. up there just in case. Um, Boucha Hedgen. Welcome. Obtuse brick. Oh, I love that. Of course I'm cool with you coming in. I love it. I love meeting new friends. Uh, I'm Danny. Uh, the disembodied voice next to me is Brian. Uh, and this is my channel where I talk about history related subjects for uh, completely from memory while I do painting and sculpting. Uh, right now I am working on some customized Funkos and talking about the Nexium sex cult. Uh, we are getting to the sex cult part right now. So you have really good timing. You also missed some of the really horrible stuff. So also good timing. <laughs> Uh, 27 hours. How was your stream? Yes, I would love to know that. Please. Um, it's always a good stream. Oh. <laughs> um, fellow ADHD -er! Yeah. Oh, man. If you uh, know ADHD, then you will fit in here. The number of times that I go. What was I talking about? 
Uh, yeah, about three, I seven d- times a second. Yeah, approximately. Uh, but yeah. So we are just having a good time, and we are talking about Nexium. Uh, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Nexium, but it is some wild stuff. Uh, and I am just getting to the really wild stuff. Um, so the uh, leader of the cults was recently finally sentenced to prison, and he was sentenced for 120 years, to give you an idea of what we're dealing with, uh, like scope-wise. Um, BRB with some modeling clay. Yeah, very fucked up shit. Um, I am. I do my best to be as sensitive as possible with like content warnings and trigger warnings. Uh, like when I was going over some really, really awful stuff earlier, I was like, please like put me on mute if this is something that's gonna upset you. And I will do some sort of visual cue to let you know when I am done talking about the upsetting stuff. So that's how I try and approach all of the difficult topics. Like we did Columbine a couple of weeks ago and that was a really difficult one to cover without being uh, depressing. <laughs> So, um, we had a great stream from Scottish history to some stand-up. Oh, man, that sounds rad. I'm bummed I missed that. Only one news tab. Ooh, only one. Uh, we are in a transition period right now away from news and politics. No more doom. Wow. Like, did you kind of just, like, hit, like, the point where you're just like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. It's just too depressing. <laughs> like, because that is understandable very much. Uh, well, uh, or is it just, you. like, a difference? Uh, also, thank you again for the raid. Oh, yeah. Today. He just wants to show off the fact that he is Gaelic learning from... Scottish yeah. Gaelic. And this is like the only time it's been relevant the entire time I've been learning Gaelic. Yeah. Um... The only time. Uh... It's, it, it's a language where every single person who speaks it can already, I can already talk to them. Everyone already speaks English. <laughs> or at least Scots, and I can understand Scots. Scots is... For the most part. Yeah. Um... You know zero Gaelic, so you are just saying words. Yeah, I know. It's, I'm lit- Hello, it's, Brayden Jade. I, oh, I like that handle. I have never met another person who speaks Gaelic. You know some. Yeah, I started learning it, and then he was like, "Ooh, that sounds fun." And then Duolingo broke my heart, and I stopped. And he's still going. Uh, so I started it. I mean, Gaelic is, it has some really fascinating structure yeah. to it. It's a really interesting language, for sure. Uh, it's definitely more different. Yeah, exactly. If you, and if you meet someone who speaks it, they also already speak English. So it's it's the, it's like one of the few languages on the planet that I will never be able to use to talk to someone I can't already talk to. And that means, of course, naturally, that's the language I picked to read. I, I picked to learn. I, des- I, I decided to learn it because I come across it a lot because I read a lot of Scottish history stuff. And I also am a giant Outlander nerd. So uh, I was like, I need to learn how to pronounce these words. I don't even need to know how, what they mean. I need to know how to pronounce them. And I feel like I got to that point. So. And uh, uh, I've never met I anyone am who speaks it. I live here. Um, <laughs> Like my family is descended from the Rose Clan. Yeah. Um, the, not Rose, but Rose. 120 years. Yeah. To an eternal god. That's like a blink, maybe? Not even. It's no time at all. And an it's an eye twitch. Time. Um, but yeah. So I don't know if y'all are familiar with Nexium at all. They were in the news a lot a couple years ago after like things came out. And, uh, all of the trials and stuff started uh they had there was this weird timing thing because um people started speaking out and then um harvey weinstein happened and me too and it kind of just like overshadowed everything and kind of put it on the back burner uh and then but then when it came out again later like when you know like it hit the news again everyone like paid attention significantly more than they would have before uh me too thank you butt spot yep she is a butt fur i agree you are a butt fur um what's a butt fur uh i don't know but it's vigorous butt wagging oh my god what's a butt fur for pooping oh god damn it We're disappointed in each other right now, honestly. Um, 
But yeah, so what I had started talking about was the like recruitment process from so there's like the first organization nexium nexium is not a sex cult nexium is um like a it's an mlm but it's like about betterment and doing better business and making making friends and just like self-improvement self-help etc uh, heard this is finally done with now that the actress has been sentenced. Yeah, like the last of the sentencing is happening right now. Uh, yeah. Currently at uh, 11.32 p.m. It's happening at the moment. I'm, is that, I, I'm assuming that's what he meant. I mean, uh, clearly courts like always sentence people at 11.30 at night. If I need a short break, I have a fun one for you. Um, I mean, like this has been a break with the raid but yeah if you want to share something fun i don't know that the chat will uh accept links so you might need but to you whisper can it pm me here hold on yeah yes Phoenix. um <laughs> wait oh chip's here hello chip welcome Welcome, you weren't with 27? Lovely to see you, my friend. Oh, um, okay, I already read that one. What is the Funko Pop I'm working on? This is uh, going to be Francesca Fiorentina, Fiorentini, who is a uh, fantastic uh, host. She has a podcast and YouTube show called The Bituation Room. And then she's also a part of The Young Turks, where she has a show called The Twituation Room. Uh, and she's wonderful and hilarious and she is going to be doing a show in Brooklyn next month and so I'm hoping to have this finished so I can give it to her in person uh, and then I have other ones um, let's see I don't know if you're familiar with Cenk Uger I'm kind of doing a, a line of all of the Turks uh, so that's him started out as Michael Scott I don't know if you can tell um, she's riding a dragon uh, and the dragon is in a box somewhere but uh, there's Anna Kasparian. Um, oh, here's the dragon. It's a salt dragon. It's actually crusted with real salt. Uh, it's a little hard to see on that camera just because the camera is kind of crappy, yeah. but. And then she rides it like that. Uh, and then, yeah, so there's other <sighs> ones as well. Oh, excuse me, madam. Um, but yeah, so I've been working on, here's Emma Vigland that I'm working on. She was also part of TYT, but now she's with the Majority Report with Sam Cedar. Uh, oh, highlighted Are you going to, interesting you ask, Maron dear. I don't know if you have seen the Funko that sits behind John during TDR of him riding a dragon. I did that. That was me. That was the first one I did. Uh, Franny is awesome. Fantastic Mondays. Yes. Uh, so yeah, so if you look at the TDR set, the dragon that John is riding behind him, there's a Funko dragon next to him. It's next to John Oliver. Um, I think I just lost my weed. Um, I did that. Yeah. Uh, it was a fun one. So Emma, yeah. Um, let me see. Okay, so if you do know TYT, let's see. I also have these. These are getting sent out soon. Here is um, Brett and Brooke. Well, and I can't see if it's on camera. Can you move that really fast? There we go. Nope. There we go. There's Brett and Brooke. So Brett and Brooke and Jenk and Anna are all going to be sent off hopefully this week to them. So, yes, that was me. I did that. Uh, he got a box that I also worked on, but it was a lot of work and I'm not doing that ever again. So. And also like no one, like he, he's not going to display the box because he's going to take yeah. everything out of the box. Yeah, so it's, like, yeah it, it's like a lot of work for something that no one's going to see because if you're seeing it you're not seeing the phone <laughs> drew and georgia that's funny yeah um john obviously had to have a dragon and then i found the daenerys riding a dragon funko and i was like oh i can make that into anna and i was like oh i can make that a salt dragon so it's just kind of like whatever like clicks in my brain when i'm looking at funkos on ebay um but yeah so that's a huge accomplishment to get all those down like to finish all these thank you um, thank you, Raffle. And let's see, Emma was on TYT last Friday, and it was amazing. Oh my gosh. Uh, Emma and John is like my favorite combination of all time. 
Uh, that box is epic. Thank you. That box also wound up spawning the rest of them because like on the back, you know how like Funko boxes have like also in this line. And so I drew a bunch of like fake Funkos of like everyone else who has a show on Twitch. Ostensibly fake. Yeah. And then now they're becoming real. So, uh, yeah, the box was fun. Thank you very much, Rachel Letney. Rachel Letney. Sorry if I said that wrong. Hopefully I said that correctly. Uh, but yeah, so I've been working on that. And then, yeah, so um, we live in Brooklyn and Franny is coming to Brooklyn next month. So I am hoping that this will be done by then and I can give it to her because she's been waiting. Like she was the co-host when John got the Funko when I sent it to him. And like, she definitely wanted one too. And I remember when I told her that I was working on one, uh, she like freaked out. So uh, I would very much like to be able to give it to her in person. Yeah. So, are you looking for the clip of him like getting it? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Hmm? Unless you happen to know where that is. Uh, I filmed it on my phone, so I could find the day. But yeah. Um. Uh, Paige, no. They're not. But. Um. Okay. So, Nexium. Sex cult. Um. One of the hard things with doing the Funkos that you rarely see the back of the people hosting the shows. So, you just kind of have to guess what they look like. Or the legs. You rarely see legs. Fortunately, they are very small with not much detail in the first place. Not when I do it. Lots of detail. Okay. I just mean compared to like the head, the face, and the pores, and the nose, mm -hmm. and the pores on the nose. Um, he is spoken for. His heart, you know. Um, okay, so Nexium. So the way that they... Oh, Drew and Georgia, I did not notice uh, you gifting a sub to $27. Thank you. And I did not notice all the follows. I'm so sorry. That was so exciting. Right. Meggie... We can list them. Hold on. Let me just Meggie LaViolent. Ooh, that's fun. Uh, obtuse Brick. Oh my gosh, Obtuse Brick. I've seen your handle before. It's a great handle. Uh, Marrow Deer. Braided Jade. Uh, Andy from Ohio. Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. Uh, and then, yeah, thank you so much. You guys are happy. Oh, I love it. Um, I hope that you enjoy learning about cults. Um, yeah, you uh, going back and thanking oh, everyone for the raid 15 minutes later. That's the other one. Very on point for ADHD land. Yeah. So JR's going to have a bandana and he has Sprocket. And then uh, that's going to be a bag of candy. Uh, yeah, that's the other one in here. And those two, those two up there on the top. Oh, yeah. Here's Jordan Yule. Uh, I've got him. And then he's going to have headphones as well that Brian is ADHDing on finishing. And I'm then engineering them as speakers. Adiana so Vega. Noise. If you're familiar with Adiana Vega, this is Adi. And this is her doggo Bea. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to sculpt the bottom of this. Aha. Uh -huh. I figured it out. Okay. So, while I do this, we're going to talk about Nexium. Um, Andy from Ohio. Hello. We should also send a literal bag of candy with his Funko. Oh, probably, yeah. But what if it's a candy he doesn't like? He's quite particular. Then we, like, can we get, like, a, um... You know how, like, during uh, like Halloween, you can get, like, a bag of, like, 80 different kinds of candy? <laughs> and just do that. So, like, it's, like, he may be very particular, but as long as, like, half of it's something, like, he can give away the rest of it. He's still got like, half the candy. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, alternative, better idea, hilarious idea. You shouldn't listen to me. This is a bad idea. We find out what candy he hates, and we send him, like, a 20-pound thing of that. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, 
So, next game. Okay, so here, so for those of you who have joined, um, let me kind of just like sum up. Um, so Nexium was created to be like a, you know, ostensibly created to be uh, like a self-help group where you learn like how to better yourself, how to better your business, uh, how to like overcome your fears. And it was really about like getting over your discomfort. And like uh, one of the things that they did was like they would tell you like, the stuff that we're going to talk about it's going to make you uncomfortable and that means it's working and if you leave just because you're uncomfortable then that means like you don't really want to better yourself and all that like they're big on the guilt like and like turning it around what is it they call it they call it the espion spin or the nexium spin basically like if someone is like hey um that thing that you were talking about earlier like i don't know how i feel about that like can we you know like and then they'll be like oh well, have you considered like not feeling that way? Like that's not literally what they'd say, but they'd say something along those lines. Like basically that. Um, Sugar-free gummy bears. Chris <laughs> a genius. I'm ignoring the the extra word you put at the beginning of your comment there that it was clearly an accident. Yes, JR is still a maraca. Uh, what happened is during the sculpting process, part of the sculpting clay came loose inside the head yeah. while she was sculpting and now there's just a dry piece of modeling clay inside the head a musical dry piece um so okay so yeah so it was really really manipulative right from the get-go uh and making it in such a way that like if you started having questions like wait there's something wrong here like that was a you problem and you really needed to work on that uh, and they were very good at uh, make gaslighting people and making them feel like, why did I ask that? That's such a dumb question. Like, what's wrong with me? Instead as of as well as like leaving there to be, a, it seems like leaving there to be an out for anything they say. Mm -hmm. As to like, especially the one really screwed up thing, which will not be repeated on the stream again. Yep. And it was said like two times in the history of the planet, as far as I'm aware. Once by the original guy and again letting us let us letting you know what he said and that's enough yeah um but like if you go in there and say hey what the fuck was that about they can easily just say it's like exactly the point was to make you stand up for that yeah or something like that it's like why aren't you get or like, like the whole point yeah. was to make you uncomfortable so it worked and so you're bettering yourself now like exactly yeah. there's always an out with everything they do yeah and because of that then they can say like Either you screwed up or, hey, you did the right thing. Congratulations. They need to give you encouragement. Whatever reason. Yeah. Um, so if you were a part of Nexium and you were a successful part of Nexium and like kind of were starting to make it into the inner circle, just not a place you wanted to be, let me tell you in advance. Um, There's a pun somewhere in their inner circle. I don't like yeah, it, whatever it is. It's, it's not a, it's, I'm not going to figure out what it is because it's an unpleasant one, but there is a pun there. Um, I guess my perpetual social discomfort means I really am superior. Thanks. Yep, that's what I'm saying. Uh, so if you were someone who was like rising up in Nexium, um, they, you might be recruited to join um, one of two subgroups. And no, we are not at the sex cult part yet. Uh, the groups were Jeunesse, and I can't remember the name of the dude group, but it doesn't matter. Oh. Okay. Brian killed the screen. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, Jeunesse was, like, the women-only group, and then, um, don't do it, Brian. Uh, my, uh, and then the other group, which was like protectors of something, something, I don't, I don't care, uh, were for, was for the dudes. And that's where a lot of the really fucked up stuff happened. Like um, grooming men to not see women as people, uh, grooming men to like, yeah, just lots of stuff. Like do what you want, take what you want. Like it's your, it's your world, you know, like that kind of thing. Like, you know, white dude shit. Uh, and then the Jeunesse group for women 
was basically grooming women on how to be abused uh, and telling them about how women are flaky and women are not good at committing to things. And so then if you are a woman in that group and you want to leave, they'll be like, yeah, because that's what women do. They're flaky and they leave. You're just proving us right. Yeah. Um... Um, so yeah, uh, and so that's where like the bad, like the big grooming started, right? But there was grooming before that Donald Trump, but a little worse. Yeah. It's Donald Trump. If Donald Trump was smart, um, because Keith is smart, like he's in a scary way, but he's also dumb in ways that like saved us from getting this worse, you know, like it got him caught. Uh, and that was mostly just feeling like he was invincible and you know fucking up so so yeah so that was where like the hardcore grooming started where it was like you know teaching you how to be abused or abuse but the grooming started like from the beginning so i mentioned already earlier how um it was designed or so part of nexium was that everyone greeted each other oh, excuse me uh everyone greeted each other with a kiss on the mouth um like that was just a thing that you did and like that was part of and if you felt weird about it they would just be like it's about getting out of your comfort zone you know like they really figured out what the best ways of manipulating people this way is i'm invincible um uh, obviously only losers lose yeah totally uh, I need to find a picture for reference. Uh, so. Right, so the um, grooming was... I'm just going to find this picture first. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep on trailing off. I have a reference picture I need. Where'd you go, picture? Sorry, sorry. I know this is very riveting content. There it is. Okay. Okay. So. So, like. Just whacking the microphone. The Titanic was unsinkable, so it obviously didn't sink. Yeah, that's how it works. Uh, and, like, the thing is, like, even, like, the Nexium talks that he would do, it's all, like roundabout speak like it's all bullshit like if you read it instead of listening to him say it you're just like what it's like trump where like he's saying it and you're like this doesn't sound like he's saying anything but you're kind of following it but then you read it and you're like oh wow he literally said nothing uh only quitters quit only losers loser <laughs> the language is used to indoctrinate people into cults are also used to encourage people to play sports yeah yeah well, sports can definitely be pretty cultish, she says, having never played sports. I mean, definitely, like, the people who follow sports and are obsessed with their teams, that can get really cultish. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah. So. Oh, the other thing was, like, since oh, they're trying. Um, yeah. Yes, correct, Mary. I'm hoping that's pronounced Meridir. I'm like I'm, I'm not 100% certain. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Saying little enough to seem smart without any content. Not only that, but if you say little enough, people can fill in the gaps with what they want you to have said. Yeah. Uh, which is something that Trump. Uh, I, I'm not even sure if he does it consciously. I don't think so. I think he's just realized that like when I do this thing, it works. Yeah, like, he doesn't understand how it works or why it works. He just, like, does it and then things happen. Yeah. It, like, he knows that that works the same way that a bird knows it flapping its wings makes it fly. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but, yeah, if you leave out as much detail as possible, people will fill in the details with whatever they want you to have said. Yeah, pretty much. Um... Maro Deer, okay. Maro Deer, Maro Deer. Mar Maro dear. I think I got that right. Uh, I can only follow Trump because I'm surrounded by idiots in my everyday life. Yeah. 
Um, okay. Oh, so one of the things that they would do in this like mentality is uh, they would do something that they called um, collateral. And it basically the idea was like um i'm going to make this commitment to myself that i'm going to exercise every morning for the next 10 days and as collateral i'm going to like say that like if i don't do it then i have to do this other thing right um and so like that concept is introduced very early on of collateral of like um you're doing this thing so you have to give something first um and so if you were part of Jeunesse and uh, they decided that you were a good fit for DOS, uh, so here's how it worked for Sarah. So Sarah was approached by like her best friend in Nexium, and she was like hardcore Nexium. Uh, and this friend had like even officiated her wedding. Like uh, her, she, yeah. Um, and the friend was like, I have this amazing opportunity, uh, but I can't tell you anything until I have some collateral. Right. And she was like, what do you mean? And so she's like, I just need something, something to like, uh, adhere you to your word. Right. Uh, yeah, it's all gross, honestly. Uh, gotta clean the kitchen. Hands go get just soapy water. Gotta clean that kitchen after all that baking from stuff that's not going into pa care packages for Danny. What? What is what? No. What? Um. So, what they said was, in order for me to tell you more about this, I need to have the collateral, and so. The collateral that they suggested was like, it can be anything like uh, a video of like you making a bit. It's Scientology, like confess your d deepest, darkest secrets. Right. Uh, but if you are like, well, I don't I don't have any deep, dark secrets. Uh, they'll just tell you like, oh, just make something up. And so a lot of these women are like making up stuff about their families, like saying that their fathers did stuff that they didn't do. Ooh, that was another thing that he said that was really gross. But I'm not going to get into that one. Because I already said the really bad one. There's another one that is almost as bad, if not as bad, that I forgot to mention. I'll mention that on Thursday, maybe. Maybe. Too much for today. Um. So you have Trump's pee tape. God, ugh. If I have that, I'd burn it. Yeah, in no way Because honestly, like, no one on the planet would be influenced in the slightest way by that existence or non-existence of it. Yeah. Name one human being on the entire planet who would like, that would make any difference to their perception of them. There's not a single human being on the planet left. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Um, I mean, obviously there's like seven, but like there's like, there's, there's seven people on the planet who would be influenced by that. Yeah. Um, Uh, right. So it was like, oh, if you don't have any like hor anything horrible to confess, then you could just like make it up, right? And so these women were tricked into making these videos, like alleging that their families or husbands or whatever did these horrible things, um, or they could write a letter, uh, and so. One of the women I watched an interview with said that, like, when she gave them the letter that she had, like, detailing some, like, personal, personal thing, uh, it wasn't just, like, she wrote it down and handed it to them. She had to, like, go and get it notarized. And, like, there was, like, this whole thing to make it, like, oh, and she had to, like, put it in an envelope addressed to, like, a major media source. So she did New York Times. And basically, like, it was addressed so that, like, if she, like, betrayed the group or whatever, they would just release that and New York Times would print it, right? 
Um, I'm pretty sure the MAGA folks would see him peeing and swear it was protected free speech and that she was clearly of age. Yeah, it would be funny. Hey, Dirty Garden Dragon. Uh, lovely to see you. Definitely don't join. Scientology is going on my book of rules to live by. Yeah, uh, we did a week on Scientology a couple weeks ago. Uh, if you have any interest on the, in those VODs, they are up. Um, it was a fun week, and I'm really glad that we did Scientology before doing this because, like, it really kind of laid a lot of the groundwork, you know? Um, so... Uh, one of the other forms of collateral that was accepted was nude photos. Um, but the photos had to be very specific. Uh, okay, I'm going to do a little content warning here for like sexual abuse and manipulation. Okay, it's going to get a little gross. Which I mean a lot gross. Um, he... So... All of these women who were joining were told that it was created by women, for women, and that Keith had nothing to do with it. Like, that's something they were specifically told, that Keith had nothing to do with it. This was only women. Uh, obviously, that was, says, that was a lie. Yeah, yeah total bullshit. He ah. was 100% behind it. He had created it. He was running it behind the scenes. Um, oh, hi, uh, Dirty Garden Dragon. Hello. Uh, uh, did we say hi to Braided Jade? The earlier i just noticed the name i'm not sure if you said hi um <laughs> i'm too crusty for a cult high levels of what'd you say fuck off yeah i mentioned earlier uh about like because i was trying to figure out like would i for this like would this work on me and just had to like think about like okay what's like any sort of similar situation i've ever been in and thought of one and realized like no i called them out on their bullshit immediately and like in front of a bunch of adults not caring even though i was like 14 15 years old uh, yeah like my best friend in orlando uh was lying to his girlfriend about something and like i immediately i just told her like it went from like i found this out like turn around pick up my phone and message her mm -hmm. like and i knew i was like and all like destroying my relationship with both of them instantly and they were my two closest friends like there was no hesitation yeah it's like it's like oh an ethical dilemma no it's not yeah for real that happened with me once i like destroyed a very important relationship because they had cheated on my friend and like i was like i can't i i can't can't do it like i i'm not a person who can keep a secret like that because that is a secret that hurts people and i'm not here yeah. for that I'm also just a contrarian by nature. Um, what? Yeah. Right. Uh, like there has to be a very good reason for me to do the things I'm told to. Like a pandemic that's killing hundreds of thousands of people. Take this vaccine. Why? Otherwise, a lot of people risk I'll take the vaccine. Yeah. But like, I understand the instinct to be like, do this. Fuck you, no. Because like, that's my instinct. I just know when, like, it's time to go, yeah, okay, fine. Yeah. And cults are not that time. Yeah, cults are never that time. And, like, the second someone is like, do this because we say so, mm -hmm. I'm burning down the building now. Um, so they didn't realize for a while exactly what was happening, but basically, um, all of these new everything was going to keith they didn't know that they thought that keith was completely apart from it um and uh like so they didn't know that like their nude photos were going to him and that not only that but like he was coaching how to do the nude photos so like uh you know you would take the photo and then you would give it to your friend who was your master um, and she would basically send it to Keith and he would say, no, I want this instead. And you, so she would then go, no, you have to do it again. And she would never say Keith said it to do it again. Um, and it was stuff like this dude is very specific with his like whatnot. Uh, he wanted, and so like, uh, one of the examples was like immediately after branding ceremonies, 
uh, he would want a picture of all of the women present, including the masters. Um, I hate calling it that. Like, I, we, if you are a follower of this channel, you know how much I hate the words slave and master, and I rant about it all the time. It should be an enslaved person and an uh, enslaver. Uh, I feel very strongly about that. With this stream in particular, it's going to be hard for me to do that because, like, it, this was a title in the cult more than, uh, like, the actual horrors of human chattel slavery. Uh, so I am going to be using those words, which might be weird for anyone who is familiar with me. Um, but yeah, Master and Commander. Uh, you have to be specific with your nude photo requests, otherwise they won't do it right. Ugh. Master than branding sounds like a BDSM thing. Well, so he would get a lot of stuff from BDSM sites. And um, when he was taken in, some of the women were extremely relieved because he had just put in a bunch of orders for like extreme BDSM equipment. Uh, and they were like, oh no, he's going to use this on me. And uh, yeah, so... But with this, like, so after branding ceremonies, he would make it so that um, all of the women would have to get completely naked. Anyone who had been branded was already naked because that was part of the branding. Uh, and he, it's basically a group picture and all of them are sitting, God, I hate this so much. Uh, they're all sitting and uh, his specific directions were that, uh, okay, I'm going to get anatom anatomically correct here. All right. So if that's a problem for you, I'm sorry, but grow up. Um, he would make it so he demanded that the inner labia were seen. Like that was part of the demands of any of these photos. Like that was a requirement. That's how I feel. Uh, yeah. Uh, they uh, were because... reenacting Napoleonic era <laughs> naval warfare. Uh, why didn't uh, he just take the photos to make sure he got what? Because he was not involved whatsoever in this program. This was by women for women. They didn't know he had anything to do with it. So this was like the higher up people like Alice and Mac. They were texting him while they were doing the stuff. And so he was directing from far away so that none of the victims would have any idea that he had anything to do with it because that was part. It wasn't that it was part of the draw was that he had nothing to do with it, but it was like that there were no men and it was only women and rah rah sisterhood and they really like safe space basically they really yeah they really like uh took they weaponized um progressive language and uh also uh regarding what Paige asked why didn't he just take the photo himself uh because there is a fair amount of uh control in making them take the pictures in a way you want compared to um, just like getting the picture. The act of get, making them take the picture themselves is very important, perhaps even more important than the actual picture itself in the mind of someone who is a narcissist and trying to control others. Yeah, yeah, he like he cares a lot about control. He wants to have control over everyone. Um, so many thoughts for Keith, yeah, right? Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, y'all. Um, the okay, so basically, so you had to hand over collateral before you even knew what this was at all. Uh, and I mean, like, obviously, that is going to affect your reaction. Like, if you hate it, you're going to hesitate before saying that you hate it because you've handed over whatever it is that you handed over. Uh, so basically, right from the start, this is not consensual. Um, like, they might act like it was consensual. Like, oh, she didn't have to hand me the collateral, but it's not consensual. Uh, so did he not get involved until after the women were branded? Um, I believe that he was never openly involved at all like i think some of them found out like after like after everything went down um 
I'm not positive about that, I'm, but I'm pretty sure that at no point was he actually openly involved. Uh, when's the last time anyone ever saw an inner Libya and thought, cool? Uh, you're extremely uh, homosexual, Raffle. Like, that is a thought that people have, I'm sure. Uh, is that even a thing people like to see? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I like it. <laughs> uh, you're a little biased here, my loves. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nice. I, I like, I like them parts. Uh, he's like, what? No. Uh, wait one minute. Since when am I gay? Um, I don't know your story. I'm sure it's a good one. I would love to know your story. Um, Shelly, you're Shelly. Okay. Um. Oh. Jordan's hat is dead. If you're in Georgia, I really need that spray bottle emote. Um, okay. So. Like, I, if you have it, just spray rough iron chef. Down, boy. <laughs> Um, okay. So. Oh no, we've fallen into the trap. <laughs> this that chat did take a turn, Axie Mom. That is definitely uh, true. You look away for one second. Um, okay. So once you handed over your collateral, they told you like, okay, there's this group and it's all about female empowerment, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think you would do really well. And you know, like it, they're always flattering the other person because that makes them more susceptible to uh, whatever bullshit you're saying. Uh, Our dear, you're absolutely correct. We do need a bonk command to send them to horny jail. <laughs> That would have been handy during the Star Trek stream when I just put him on timeout. Yeah, um, I'll look into that and talk to Rudrick about it later. As soon as I can uh, remember how to get um, the Nightbot login, or like as soon as I can get the information from her to get Nightbot login working correctly. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah, so all of the women obviously like had different reactions to you know, being told everything. And basically all of them had the same, like, uh, I might as well try it out before I say, you know. And also, like, it probably sounded really exciting. Wait, um, Drew, do you not know about the Star Trek scene? Like, I don't have memory of specific events. That's not how my brain works. So it's entirely possible you were in the Star Trek stream and I forgot. Uh, Drew and Georgia, yeah. Uh, Sunday evenings, Br Brian and other roommate take over the stream and um, talk about Star Trek like a bunch of nerds. Uh, yeah, every Sunday at 6 uh, Eastern. And then at 9 Eastern is when we do movie night on Sundays. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, so it looks really good. You just have to put it upside down while it dries, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Mary Duff, I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you're enjoying it. This is a fun group of people, I feel. Um, like I'm just like sitting here babbling, but everyone in the chat is being hilarious. So, uh, damn, Twitch doesn't give me any notifications anymore. Oh, that's frustrating. You know what? I've been thinking about that specifically. Um, I am very frustrated with YouTube in particular, uh, because like it doesn't give me notifications when certain things that I really enjoy watching uh, go live. Mm -hmm. And I'll just find out about it like three days later. And like, especially anything from the Vulgan. Like, it's like, God damn it. Like, this is my favorite thing in the world. Uh, and I sleep listening to SCP stories every single night. Uh, and like, I'll go sometimes a week without knowing that 
and uh, like a new one has been released and it's really frustrating and like twitch sometimes i just don't get notifications for things and i am like it's not that hard for content providers to be able to notify like send emails to people to let them know about things mm -hmm. and it's not that hard for like youtube or twitch to actually just like do the notification they are they're just like not doing it because they have algorithmic reasons to fuck shit over and so like i'm getting real close to being like maybe i can write a service that you can like log into with your twitch and or and and or youtube account and be like oh yeah see all these things i'm subscribed to or whatever and so like mark the ones you want to specifically get a notification from every single time yeah no matter what like no algorithm is just that you just it's like you i want notifications because every single time i want a keyword on this one so only tell me if this keyword yeah it will be really nice would you mind filling this up please yeah, yeah. thank you um okay uh danny brings good people together oh that's that's my life goal uh loud noises ignore the man behind the curtain um what movie did we watch on sunday we watched the godfather because last week we talked about the new york city mafia uh so we watched the godfather which was a really good movie like i know that that sounds ridiculous to be like wow the godfather's good because like everyone's been obsessed with it for 50 years but like i it was surprised at how actually enjoyable of a viewing it was and i'm excited to eventually watch part two uh so thank you for enjoying my babbling i appreciate it xy mom and i could tell echo to remind me Ooh, on mobile youtube only shows max five notifications of video deleting the oldest to make space for new ones yeah thank you thank you uh anytime the twitch app updates i lose notifications follows oh that's annoying hello graystorm three lovely to see you welcome um we're talking about a cult so uh and we're getting to i mean we've been in a lot of the i don't know what word to use weeds yeah yeah it's been fun like uh, the one in your hand yeah exactly not this one um so okay so I'm trying to remember exactly where it was. Mm, oh no, I'm kicking myself for missing movie night. Movie nights, yeah, it's fun. Like we just started doing it like, like a month ago, a month and a half ago. Something like that, yeah. Uh, and it hasn't been every Sunday, but basically it's like if there's an option that can tie into the theme, uh, we'll watch that. So I don't know what we would do this weekend. I'll think about it. Um, I know what we could do. None of that. I'm just looking for any excuse to watch that movie. Uh, back to the cult subject. Why does religion and sex so often intertwine? Because it's a really, really useful way of controlling people. If you can control their sex lives, you can control them. Pretty much. Also, just humans are obsessed with sex. So any excuse or way to like have sex is going to be a thing that people use to have sex. Like it. it yeah, you know what? Like, turns out, like, a lot of people are attracted to musicians. And a lot of people get into playing an instrument because of that, because they want to have sex. Mm. Yep. Um, but yeah, it is quite frustrating, and it's very damaging to the followers, obviously. Usually the female followers. Funny how that works. Um, are we about to end? No, we still have a bit to go. Um generally end around one so we have at least 45 minutes uh never mind echo uh because god wants you to be horny so he can watch you know i'm just not doing a great job <laughs> uh so okay welcome back andy from ohio hello um okay let's see what part of it this is why this is when it gets fun with doing all of this from memory is that then i'm like wait what's next um i'm telling you you should just have a rough outline of like 10 bullet points just that nothing more right, right. 
Just to, just like not so you can like remember it. Just so you know, yeah, I remember all the information, but I was going to not get to that in the right order thing. Yeah. Um, oh, this is another one I'm working on. This is Ben Carollo. Uh, he hosts, or she, sorry, she hosts Galaxy Brain. Uh, I messaged her to uh, get input on what sort of how I should do her Funko. Uh, like, Good night, Andy. And uh, yes, Dirty Garden Dragon, they, he is in jail now. Yeah, uh, he was sentenced to 120 years in prison. That's how bad this stuff gets. 120 years. Ooh, I totally skipped over all of the child sex abuse. Yeah, that's Thursday's problem. That's that's that's, that's Danny on Thursday's problem. Uh, thank you, Andy from Ohio. Oh, I'll be right back. Yeah, I try and like, I think I like just like consciously and subconsciously like avoid like of really awful stuff. Um, let me just say, he has a history of child sex abuse that goes from well before he started uh, Nexium. Um, I can tell you about a woman named Daniela. Uh, she was from... Well, I hope we see you again, Andy, from Ohio. So lovely to meet you. Uh, enjoy Ohio. But, but. Uh, oh, Daniela. So Daniela and her family were uh, from Mexico. Uh, Nexium is very popular in Mexico still to this day. And like they got um, like the Mexican equivalent of like JFK Jr. to join. Uh, they had the daughter of like the current Mexican president. Uh, yeah, like, it's big in Mexico. And so this family, um, I don't remember exactly why, but they moved from Mexico to Albany. And uh, all of the family was in the cult. It was the parents, and there were three children. Uh, one boy and two girls. No, it was four children. One boy and three girls. And by the end of this, Keith has had sex with all of the female victims here um so and like at one point he tried to like initiate a threesome between with two of the sisters and they were just like so uh like horrified obviously that they just started crying and he's like well you're killing the mood i guess we won't do it uh, uh people who abuse children should get their d's cut i mean women can be abusers too children are at risk yeah definitely it's not just men uh so thank you um so daniela was being groomed by Keith, and he said that like he told all these girls that they, he was gonna wait until like their 18th birthday even though like they, they did other stuff um like yeah, it was like the second that, they, that you turn 18, we're going to do it. And like, that's what he says. I don't think that he actually did. Like, I think that he is just trying to cover his butt. I think that he, yeah, it does. Eh. Anyway. Rough Iron Chef, that's not crying, that's stigmata. Um, yeah. So, okay. Daniela's story is wild. All right. It's, it's like a highlight of the whole Nexium thing is her story. Uh, like, at least one of the convictions that he got that led to 120 years was based solely off of what he did to this one woman. Girl at the time. And uh, whenever there are children, Peter there will be. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, awful. Uh, very specific. So, yeah, so the family moves to Albany and Keith is grooming the daughters and the parents are like hardcore gung-ho uh, in it. And this is Nexium. This is not Janess or the other one. Uh, women who abuse should get locked up. I don't know what other punishment they could get. See, I feel really conflicted over like punishments because like it should definitely fit the crime, but how do you decide what fits the crime? And like, I don't believe that like two wrongs make a right, but I also believe that like there should be some like people need 
a comeuppance when they do bad. It needs to happen. Um, and it doesn't always happen in life, which sucks. Uh, and is why, even though I am firmly agnostic, I like feel the need that I need to believe in hell. I just need to believe it exists. Um, so, uh, Danielle. So they're living in Albany, really involved in Nexium, like living, uh, like there's basically like a little, like a street in a neighborhood that they've kind of like taken over. Um, and so, yeah, so he's grooming these girls and then he finds out, I think she's 16 when this happens. Uh, I mean, I'm all for destigmatizing pedophilic thoughts. So people at risk for committing child abuse feel comfortable seeking professional help. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Punishment as a deterrent is not enough. Yeah. There needs to be help from the start. Yeah, definitely. And there needs to be some sort of screening, some sort of like, not only that, but um, actively trying to, um, like, shame people who are having the thoughts but choosing not to act on them drives them away from getting help, drives them towards people who do accept them, and increases the chances of them actually offending. So the act of, like, uh, trying to say anyone with these thoughts should just, like, stay the fuck away from me, should kill all of them, etc., actually may increase the incidence of pedophilia, not decrease it. And we all need to be aware of, like, the consequences of our actions, even though, like, it feels like we should be furious and angry at these people for even existing. Like, maybe we're actually doing more harm by acting that way. Not 100% certain. We should look into that, verify, try to figure out what we can do to prevent things, etc. Yada, yada, yada. It radicalizes them in smaller insular communities, yeah. Um, finally done naming pizza donut three days in the fridge. <laughs> Uh, if we lived in the better timeline, the abusers would receive psych, chemical, physical treatment or confinement as needed. Yeah, if only. Um, okay. So, the thing that led to Daniela going through what she goes through uh, is that she dared to uh, have a crush on another boy her age she felt an attraction some people say that they like kissed once uh other people say that like you know like she just had a crush on him uh it doesn't fucking matter honestly it, it doesn't matter like what she did or didn't do like uh what happens is yeah so um have i heard of sylvia lincoln's uh what she and her sister went through and hear what the people did um i'm so bad with names it's possible i've heard of her i'm not positive like when i started doing the research for nexium i realized that i'd already listened to a whole thing about it in another podcast that i liked but i didn't remember the person's name so i hadn't realized it was the same thing um but uh i will i, I will look up later and see I am very happy that y'all understand where I'm coming from because I have expressed that concept multiple times in the past and have people like uh, insist that I am trying to help pedophiles. It's like, that's, I am trying to keep kids safe. And the fact that you don't care about that concerns me. Yeah. Like the people who like hate my thoughts about like trying to prevent uh, uh, that from happening. It's like, I'm trying to prevent it. You want it to happen so you can be angry about it. We're not the same. You like pedophilia because you want to be angry about it. And those people, like, I, I very much says like them because they actually don't get off on it, but they still want it to happen. Pedophiles, they don't have a choice about the fact they are, are attracted to children. What they choose to do with that attraction, whether or not they choose to molest or not they choose to get help, that's their own choice. Uh, but the people who are just like, oh, I don't get off on it, but I really want it to happen so I can be angry about it. Those people are fucked up. And those are the like true monsters of the world. The pedophiles who are who choose not to offend are not monsters. They're just people who have a sexual attraction that can't be indulged ethically and consensually. Yeah. Um, as long as it's consensual. Yeah. 
Uh, I've gotten shit for it too. It's hard for people to understand they want prevention, not prophylactics. They want revenge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is definitely the problem. Um, so, Daniela dared to have a crush on a boy that was age appropriate for her and not a couple decades older than her. Um, and as a result, she was uh, locked up. Well, she wasn't even locked up. She was uh, confined to her room uh, for two years. She was not allowed to leave her bedroom for two years. Uh, she also was not allowed to talk to anyone. Uh, even like her parents, when they would come to bring her food and stuff, wouldn't talk to her because they were so in the cult that they were like, well, he said we can't talk to you, so we're not going to talk to you. Um, all that she had was uh, basically pen and paper. So she had journals that she was keeping. Um, yeah, for two years, she was basically locked up in a tower over having a crush on a boy. Um, pedophiles who choose not to offend art monsters they're just band teachers brothel uh, two years of confinement yeah yeah. Um, I'm a little trench I didn't hear the beginning as but I think thank you for the follow beard nutter I like that handle thank you beard nutter for the follow welcome uh, as, I think you said something about helping victims to stop the cycle yeah yeah there needs to be education for the victims and like deprogramming and yeah, um, they need help. Uh, this isn't even confinement. This is solitary confinement, which is a method of torture. Yeah. Oh, it's absolutely torture. Um, like, she, can you imagine two years of like, they would leave food outside her door. It just, yeah. And it was just like, she was just in her room in one of the houses on the street that everyone lived on. So, like, in some of the documentaries, uh, the survivors, w like, in one of them, the survivor, like, pointed to the window and was like, she was there for two years, and I was right here, and I had no idea. Um, did my screen freeze? Um... Education, encouragement for positive change in thought patterns seems appropriate. Shaming does not. Yeah. How old was she? So. I am trying to remember if she was 18 when it started or 18 when she got out. So either 16 or 18. Uh, either way, a, a child, honestly. Like, I know 18 is technically an adult, but that's a child. Um. Uh, I have no idea what I said, but I'm back. Oh, well, I'm glad you're back. I'm not sure what you missed, though. Um, but yeah, she um, she has, like, her own, like, section of the entire lawsuit. Uh, you know, as she should. Uh, people suck, you know? But yeah, so... I'm like trying to like lay all of the foundation before getting into the like actual thing. Uh, am I avoiding? Am I building suspense? No, I'm just doing what I, what happens. And apparently, what's happening is that I'm avoiding talking about the uh, actual DOS. Um, this ha it's a heavy subject, y'all. Anybody over 13 knows that 18 is still a child. Yeah, right? Exactly. Um, like, when you're 18, you don't think 18 is a child. You think 18 is an adult. But when you are, you know, yeah. I think 30 is about when you realize it. Yeah. Um, good. Okay, cool. There's a reason even prisons aren't theoretically allowed to do it for more than a week or two. Yeah, that theoretically is doing a lot of heavy lifting there. Because... Uh, yeah, I've I've done more reading up on death row and how the inmates are treated since I covered the West Memphis Three than I ever have in my life. Uh, it's truly horrific. And Damien Eccles is uh, trying to launch like 
reform. Uh, but, you know, it's next to impossible. So, let's see. 18 is still a butt. Was Nexium the one with the lady from Smallville? Yes. Yeah. So Allison Mack is heavily featured in this story. Um, and like Nexium is how you pronounce it, but because they're pretentious asshats, it's spelled like it looks like it's Roman numerals and it's N X I V M, but it's pronounced Nexium. Yeah. Uh, there's a reason. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, um, she was in there for two years. Yeah, I like, and that's that's such a formative age. Those are such important years, um, and like a lot of these women, uh, basically have the same thing. Like, they lost all of these years, uh, that were like really formative years, and so they were being brainwashed and gaslit. Uh, during a time in life where your brain is like actively forming what it's going to become and like whatever happens at the age really has an impact on who you are as an adult and like you know you were all 18 you get it uh, I know that prisons don't follow the law on this but oh yeah um, their cult name sounds like a cholesterol medication it really does uh yeah. So once you gave your collateral and decided to join DOS, uh, like, so Sarah, for example, when Laura told her about it and she said that, like, the way that she framed it was like, yeah, like there's master and slave, but it's not literal. Like those are just titles to help us. Like they're metaphors and they're going to help us grow, blah, blah, blah. Um, and like, she's like, you're not literally going to be my slave, you know, even though yeah, she was. And so she was like, okay, yeah, like, I'm like, let's join, like, let's see. Cause you know, so far Nexium has only helped my life. So obviously this will be the same. <sighs> yeah. Uh, okay. She was an adult when she was confined to her room, but she was 16 when she joined. Thank you, Axie mom. Okay. Thank you. I knew that like, yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. So yeah, so she was technically an adult. She was still a kid. I'm sorry, like, you don't lock someone that easy. Yeah, anyway, you don't lock anyone. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, history fact. I just touched paint. That's not the history fact. Yes, I got paint on my blanket. Hold on. This is why this blanket is ugly. And I'm not using one of the pretty blankets. Okay. Actual history fact. Nobody's sure why everyone thinks V is replaced for U in Roman uh, when it was mostly the case only in stone carvings as it's way easier to do when carving stone. That's why Roman things and older stone carvings like Massachusetts Institute of Technology is written with Vs on paper. The Romans regularly used U. So today it's 100% pretentious bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did uh, a week on ancient Rome. Uh, that should be in the VODs somewhere. That was a fun one. I really enjoyed that. Um, like, ugh, I get really nerdy about ancient Rome. I love it. Like, my my gateway drug into history loving was Pompeii. I read a picture book about Pompeii when I was in kindergarten or first grade. And, like, was it obsessed. I was like, what is this? So I've wanted to go there since kindergarten or first grade. And, um, like... I was just so fascinated by this thing. And then uh, a year or two later, I discovered the Titanic. Uh, and this was before the movie came out. Uh, and that was my, like, that was the thing that really got me. Axie Mom, thank you for gifting a subscription to uh, uh, Maru Dear. Yay. Thank you. Um, yeah. So... 
yeah. So I like have a very soft spot in my heart for any sort of ancient Rome anything. Uh, and one day I'll go back. It'll happen. I've only been once and I was in eighth grade and I went for a World Youth Day event and the plane broke on the way there. Uh, fortunately, we were still in the airport when it broke. And after spending over 24 hours in LAX, uh, because new people, I am I live in New York City, but I am from Southern California originally. It comes up. Uh, so I spent over 24 hours in LAX and then we flew to Italy. And the thing was that those 24 hours had been our touring time. Like that was the time that was scheduled for touring because the rest of the time was for the World Youth Day. Welcome Jitsia. Uh, and yeah, so basically I only got to walk past stuff. I, I didn't actually get to see stuff. I didn't get to go in any of the buildings, um, just walking past and I didn't even get to go close to Pompeii. So don't get her started on the Titanic. You hush. You discovered the Titanic. I did. Yeah, that was me. I'm Robert Ballard. Surprise. Uh, how do you read a picture book? It's one of those like books that are like uh learning how to read and so it's a picture book and then it has like a sentence or two on the page and you read that sentence but then the next, so it's mostly pictures with like a sentence or two on each page it's made for kindergarten first grade um Brayda jade knows axi mom axi mom is usually here because she loves me and it's very mutual extremely mutual um so you missed your touring of Rome. I miss Rome. Yeah, no big deal. It's just Rome. Nothing to see there. Nothing to do. Um, but yeah, so I do have a whole week, well, two streams of VODs where I'm talking about Rome. I need to Dremel JR some more. I'm going to stop painting him and do that. Um, but yeah, so Nexium. Um, definitely sign me up for the trip to Rome. I want to go so bad. Uh, my dream is to have like a traveling history show where I like travel and talk about history with you one day. Obviously, Rome will be very high up on that list. Pompeii will probably be first. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I have like a whole like mental, um, like map slash list of my future Western European trip uh, and like what I want to see especially and uh, yeah so hopefully one day um, well you could play Assassin's Creed and enjoy Rome that way totally the same thing uh, or just or watch Blue's videos where he's just in game going through history and architecture of the city. Blue is in Blue's Clues. Blue's Clues. Uh, but Assassin's Creed, you get to climb the buildings and jump off them. Ooh. Technically, you can also do that in real life. I don't know for how long, but you can. At least once. In hay files, perfect. Uh, all those conveniently located hay piles that are all over Rome. Um, yeah, I'm guessing once, yeah. Uh, okay. So, the structure of DOS. It was another pyra uh, pyramid scheme, like... Everything that Keith comes up with is a pyramid scheme, basically. And uh, so there was like the first level of, again, I'm going to say, I hate using the word slave and master. Those are not the correct words to use when I'm talking about slavery. I always say enslaved person and enslaver. Uh, I feel like that's very important. Slave is Slavery is not an identity. It is not who someone is. It is something that is inflicted upon them that they survive or die from. Uh, 
it's something that they have to live through it's not it's not them and as such i feel like reducing it to slave and master both validates what they want to be validated and disrespects the entire life of the victim uh so i feel very strongly about that uh sorry to come across as like luxury if i did but um yeah that's something i care about a lot so in this case however i'm probably gonna stick with the language i don't like it um i'm gonna kind of see where i end up feeling comfortable we're gonna find out together uh and like and watching documentaries like i really hated how most of these women are still using the terminology like they will still say oh my master did this and like every time i would just like physically react with a cringe or something it was just painful um like even though they're out even though they're working on deprogramming um they still uh like not realizing it they still use that language and i feel like that is just so sad um I am so with you. I have Google Maps stars all over your European future stops. Okay. Uh, someone needs to make a mod where every hip pile becomes a truck full of mattresses. Uh, we are gonna sh we're gonna look at Danny's Google Maps um, really fast. That's me. I'm Danny. Um, okay, really fast. Well, depending on how high you climb, it's probably going to be just one jump off a building. Yeah, yeah. Lots of variables in there if we ever get a COVID under control. Exactly. My, uh, when I started planning the, like, I'm a nerd, so I make spreadsheets. So I started a spreadsheet of like places I want to go. And the title was European trip 2020? Question mark, question mark, question mark. And we know how that went. Um, YouTube supposedly has videos where you can tour different cities and countries without ever leaving your home. I've actually t uh, looked at a bunch of different walking tours on YouTube. There's some really good ones out there. So here's my map of, so here's where I live. This is, this is New York City. And those are all my bookmarks. There's Manhattan. They're all color coded and organized by what they are. <laughs> I'm such a fucking nerd. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a there's a particular group that does tour guide walking tours, um, and it's called Free Tours by Foot. I really recommend them. They have a couple different channels. They have like one for London. That's how I discover them. They have one. Uh, I think they have one for New York. One for LA. They have a bunch of different ones. Um, so like check YouTube Free Tours by Foot. I really like them. I really like the London ones. Uh, the main tour guide for the London ones, her name is Siobhan, and she is awesome. I love her. I discovered it because they did a Jack the Ripper walking tour, and I did uh, Jack the Ripper in the live stream, what, two months ago? Something like that? Something like that, yeah. Um, so, and, like, I always try and approach topics from, like, a unique angle or, like, a, a more sensitive and humanizing angle i think is kind of the general goal um and so when i covered jack the ripper rather than talking about all the gory details and everything i talked about the women who he murdered and i talked about their lives and i talked about like what they went through before they even encountered him and like what life was like in london at that time and like that was that's what i'm more focused on than like i like listening to and reading about the gory stuff but it turns out i don't like talking about it weird um Casting class. Subjugate doesn't quite have the same connotation as slave subjugate. It's the thing is like generally I would just be like uh I would just say enslaved person, but like this is almost like a proper noun. Like because it's the titles that they used in their cult, you know? Um, so it's kind of like if you're uh do like the kkk for example like you're talking about like what the grand dragon wizard or whatever the fuck they are like you don't want to validate that they consider themselves the grand dragon wizard but at the same time when you're talking about a kkk like thing it's really hard to talk about the grand dragon dragon wizard without calling him the grand dragon wizard you know like you can call him by his first name but like there's a bunch of them out there you, you know uh, actually the, like the 
Grand Dragon. There's, like, there's yeah. a one. Yeah. yeah. There's like there's one per state, I believe, for the Grand Dragon. Blue from Overly Sarcastic Productions. Cool. I'll check it out. Um, yeah, thank I, you. Um, I took a glance at that, and it's um, my understanding is it's basically just like playing through Assassin's Creed. I actually have all the Assassin's Creed games, so we could also do that. Where have... we can like step through the game and explore areas, etc. That could be useful for like game streaming ish, where I would play it and you could like direct me around like a tour guide. Hmm, I would consider that. That could be fun. We could just do like a game night. Would you guys want to watch? Would you want to watch me try and do a video game? That would be a lot game. of fun. Um, the Dragon Squad officially denounces those big dragons. Yeah. Uh, I love to fly. I love to travel. I don't think I could travel without traveling. Um, that's a funny sentence, but it makes sense. Um, I want to get a VR headset for my phone as that seems like the VR headsets would just make it more realistic than just the TV. Yeah, definitely. Um, you can get, like, you can make some, there's like tutorials and stuff to make your own. I don't, I don't know how well they work, but I've definitely They're seen them around wonky, a lot. They're wonky, but they work-ish. Yeah. Um, oh, that's... I'm too late. Uh, let's see. I that would be hilarious. Thank you for the vote of confidence, Raffle. Uh I stream all the AC games. It's a lot of fun. I'm all for shenanigans. Uh, and the new games have historical modes where you can just walk around and enjoy yourself in historical facts and stuff. Ooh. I'll have to figure out which one of those which ones those are and grab those in particular. But yeah, I've got uh, several computers that are um, capable of doing the gaming stuff for something like that. Yeah, I, I, like, my parents were basically, like, anti-video game. So I did not grow up gaming, and as a result, I do not game and, like, have never had an active interest in it, even though I am, like, friends with a bajillion gamers. Um, it would be hilarious if, like, you do this and you just fall in love with these games. And I then have... you become a Twitch game streamer, like, out of nowhere... And it's like, I love video games now. Why do you love video games? Because I'm doing it for a job. Be the first person in history to say that ever. <laughs> uh, I have a friend whose bachelor party was um, basically LARPing Assassin's Creed at Disneyland with his friends. Nice. Yeah. Uh, it was really fun to like look at the pictures and stuff. Obviously, I wasn't there. Um but yeah, I want to see Danny react to Da Vinci. I love Da Vinci, both in person and in the movie Ever After. You would love him in Star Trek if you ever watched it. Mm, interesting. Origins has a lot. Odyssey and Valhalla have as well. Haven't tried them yet. And I'm Viking, so I grew up with it, and I don't need the Valhalla much anyway. Yeah, no, I just I was raised by two bookworms. Uh, so I grew up without TV and I grew up without games, basically. I grew up with a lot of movies. We watched lots of movies together. So my movie knowledge is there's random gaps because they're like really conservative and stuff. And so like I wasn't allowed to watch a lot of stuff. But uh, in general, my movie knowledge is like ridiculous. So I know, I know. I would love to see Danny react to Da Vinci in Assassin's Creed. Okay, so it looks like right now I have the original Brotherhood Revelations 3, Liberation, and Black Flag. Uh, I can get the other ones, obviously, but those are the six I have. I've never actually played them. I just uh, bought them on uh, one of Steam's, like, uh, summer or winter or spring or fall uh, sale days. Because spring does uh, sales, and, like, the games are actually super fucking cheap on the sale day it's like you can get like i think i got assassin's creed it was at the time or like one of the assassin's creed it was like uh 40 dollars normally i got it for like 10 bucks so i'm watching blue and venice and rome it's awesome lots of historical knowledge he majored in history i think nice i majored in technical theater and here i am <laughs> okay good night blue, uh, or, uh, good night raffle. raffle you know we love you even though we put you in jail and yell at you uh, the older games are real cheap on stream on Steam. Um, okay. I could maybe try a Friday or Saturday. 
we could do yeah, a stream. Yeah, we can figure it out. Um, yeah. We're definitely, what we'll have to do is, like, get you into, like, one of the ones that doesn't have the historical modes, like one of the earlier ones, and do, like, that, like, outside of the stream. And just make sure we've, like, uh, got all the kinks worked out, etc. There's a game that's, like, been in the works for forever. Like, I think since I was in high school, um, where it's, like they've reconstructed the entire Titanic and you can just like walk around and like there's obviously a game too but you can like walk around. oh god I want it so bad it, I think it's called Honor and Glory and like uh, I want it they made a uh, a real time uh, animation of the sinking of the Titanic and uh, once I found it I have now added it to my annual uh, things that I do on the anniversary is just have that like I started at the right time. Oh, thank you for following the channel. Denonymously. Oh, I like that. Uh, I'm guessing we are named twins. Hello, other Dan per person. I'm Danny. Huzzah. Uh, there's a computer game called Gris. 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 Uh, what language am I pronouncing that in? Uh, then it's an artsy type game. Please play that one. Wait, is it out? No, that's the I'm website. Looking. Yeah, I'm checking it out. Yeah, see, so donate to the project. Um, it's so pretty. Yeah, I was looking at this earlier. Like, I was actually like <laughs> researching it to see if there were any out there a couple months ago, but I, it wasn't out then, obviously. I just remembered a dream I had this week, where the Titanic. <laughs> Sorry, it's so dumb. What is my brain? I had a dream that the Titanic made it to New York Harbor and then like sank in the harbor. <laughs> that's, 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 right. that's about right for you. <laughs> I totally forgot about that until like I looked at the website and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, sounds like Spanish Gree. Okay. Cool. Um, I will check that out and we'll figure out a day to try and make me game. I just, I don't understand a lot of the games. Like, I don't understand the appeal of them. And I don't, like, when I try playing, I just find it stressful. And I think, uh, You know what we need to do? I need to, we need to find, uh, make sure that we play it on, like, a really easy setting. So it's basically just an interactive movie with uh, <laughs> minor interaction. That's yeah. funny. You're funny, Aximum. Um, well, I got us all the way up to start of the sex cult stuff. So uh, I'm pretty proud of myself there. Um, it is time to wrap up because if you are new, we have another roommate and she is a normal human person who sleeps at normal human times, uh, which I do not and Brian does not. Um, ooh, ooh. Ryan just found a whole bunch of virtual reality Titanic videos. No, I found a VR Titanic game. <gasps> what? Y'all, there's a Titanic game. Okay, I might have a game night now. We need a VR headset first. Oh, dumb. Uh, oh, well, I, maybe it's because I was gonna I get one eventually, them so. that you don't get them. Well, I have tried playing games. It's not like I'm just sitting there being like, I don't get it. Like. I, I don't get it because when I try playing them, I'm like, this is stressing me out or I'm not capable of walking correctly or I keep falling off the rainbow road or whatever. Like, it's just, it winds up being more stressful than fun. Oh, there was, a, there is something that we can experiment with to figure out which one works for you uh, be, or which uh, game, like, controller settings work for you. Because uh, back when the original Halo came out and, like, I went, to go like play with friends uh like i tried playing on the controller and it was unusable like i just kept like walking into random things i couldn't do anything uh someone was watching me play it and they went give me your controller they gave it to them they went into the menu they changed one setting invert uh look so that when i push up on the joystick i look down handed it back to me and i started killing everyone on the other team instantly <laughs> so like it's entirely possible that there's just like one setting we have to change and everything's going to make perfect sense maybe we'll find out uh 7 a.m where are you my dear 
7 a.m. That would be approximately Germany. Yeah. Or like you're um, not UK. Or north of uh, Sweden or Norway, possibly Denmark. Either way, it sounds like you live somewhere way better than the U.S. Not that, not like it's hard. Um. But yeah. So okay. Um. If I do start gaming, Saturday nights are probably going to be the best one. Now that I'm thinking about it. But we'll let, let you know. Join the Discord. And uh, we will uh, keep Hooray. Uh, keep you updated there for sure. Norway, but from Denmark originally. I mentioned both Rad. of those. Oh, thank you for the bits. Dirty Garden Dragon. So appreciated. Uh, Street Fighter Tournament next stream. Unlikely. <laughs> Uh, it, it would go really well with the whole sex cult theme, I think, right? Um, Not even slightly. <laughs> I'm one of those who sleeps normal showers. Well, look at you, Axie Mom. Aren't you lucky? It's cool. I just fall asleep like when the sun's coming up. Wait, I think it comes over the West Coast, doesn't she? I believe so. Yeah, so, yeah uh, Oregon. Was that? Oregon. Okay, so yeah, then it's only like uh, 10 o'clock there. Um, okay. Oh, that's Heard right. They uh, have Viking, Viking, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, it all comes together. I was going off a name and time zone, because I know that time zone and the country in it, and Maradir oh. is <laughs> going to be a uh, Scandinavian like word derived, uh -huh. derived from something like that, so... I heard Ricky, we're, yeah. we're about to decide who to raid. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, it was a good stream. We had a good time. Uh, missed you, though. Uh, $27 rated, so we have a bunch of new friends now. Um, well, new friends. You probably know a lot of them, because a lot of them are from TYT. Uh, just in time for a raid. Who's even on right now? I managed to not be depressing, I feel. Please confirm, everyone. Like, I feel like I didn't get creepy and depressing and weird, What, even though I'm discussing a creepy and depressing and weird topic. Oh, thank you for the subs, Brian. <laughs> uh, don't start a hype train. That would be ridiculous at two minutes till uh, signing off. Uh, but yeah, let's send everyone somewhere. Uh, let's okay. see here. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, okay. We are... Oh, can you uh, Discord? Yeah, give me a second. Or, Rude Ricky, since you're here now. <laughs> Perfect. Would you mind doing the Discord link, please? Okay, uh, so what do you think? The Songaree is on. We like her. Uh, Rude Ricky said John. Wait, John's on? We're about Jack. John Lee Music has a thousand people watching. Oh, holy shit, what? So I think that's where That's why I go. didn't notice him. Let's get it to a thousand. Okay, we are uh, doing uh, John Lee because he has almost a thousand people watching right now. Um, thanks for the so company. I really need this. Meredith, I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. Um, I really like doing this and um, talking to y'all and meeting new people and everything. So I really love it. Um, so thank you everyone for joining. John well, is John front Lee's page. Yeah, let's definitely raid. Oh, so we are going to raid John Lee. Um, because he's fancy right now and we want to support that and he's just shy of a thousand people watching so we're gonna get that over that uh and so thursday we're gonna get into the nitty gritty stuff because i stopped right before that not on purpose but that's how it works um all right enjoy i'm gonna hit that raid now and say good night good night good night everyone we love you